Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Aeroflow Race for Real. Yes, it's a pocket rocket back in the house again. I'm still on a high from Good Friday, and what better to try and contain my energy of methanol, tyre smoke and carnage than having the bushman right next to me. How are you, Steve? I'm um, well, thank you, Stuart. I, uh, by the sound of it, you're still, uh, you're still, uh, still on a high from the weekend. I'll uh, try and... Uh, Soothe the, uh, <laughs> soothe the enthusiasm a little bit, but uh, I'm sure you were absolutely in your oh, element. God. We had what, nearly 100 burnout cars uh, entered in uh, last Friday's uh, Good Friday burnouts, and uh, I am sure that that was an absolute cracker of an e event. Oh, it was, too. We actually had one of the biggest crowds that we've had here um, probably about four or five years now. It was a fantastic crowd, too, and it was great to be commentating again with David Pendlebury. Uh, we had a lot of fun and a great amount of burnouts as well. G'day, B.A. Skidder, how are you? R.C., how are you, mate? Uh, Fishing King, how are you, mate? Well, of course, we are already live on the Sydney Dragway official YouTube channel, so if you are out in the crowd and uh, want to listen to us in a slight time delay, I guess, or down in the pits and want to keep an eye on your friends racing, or just... Uh, want your friends at home to uh, check out the action that's happening here at Sydney Dragway, log on to um, YouTube and search Sydney Dragway Official YouTube. And of course, we've got uh, Benny Garrard up here switching the cams tonight and doing his best to answer questions and whatnot. And of course, Stuart and I uh, will uh, chime on in if there's uh, an interesting discussion or some questions asked. Yeah, it is. G'day, Zach. G'day, Soyop. DJ Prouse, how are you, mate? All the gangs here. Oh, everyone's here. Speaking about the gangs here, Danny Stalemeyer is down there now, and the giant killing Kluger. He was telling me he's got to practice his reaction time, Steve. He said he felt he was a bit off. Well, yeah, he was eating um, some hot chips when I walked past him <laughs> in the staging lanes. And I said, usually, Danny, I said, the hot chips for me gives me about an hour and a half before I'm looking for bed. So <laughs> he said, well, I've got an hour and a half then. So uh, he's, he'll, he'll be on the high for the hour and a half with the carbs, yeah. and then once they kick in, then he'll have to uh, he'll, he'll have to keep on the ball. 061 on the tree, not a bad light for uh, Stadelmeyer. Of course, uh, a, a very regular racer here at Sydney Dragway. Um, I haven't seen him in the AU for a while. Uh, he's running yeah. the, the Kluger, I think, the last... Um, Speed Attic Clothing Co. Championship. He ran the Kluger in Street Fighter. 15.23 with an 8.91 mile an hour to a 14.74 there in the Rocket Lane. Of course, um, the Street Fighter category is set up for our grassroots races here at Sydney Dragway. You, if you uh, come along to the Aeroflow Race for Real like tonight and say, I want to give this the full experience a crack in terms of having dial-ins and breakouts and all that sort of thing, you can come along to the... Uh, Speed Attic Clothing Co. Championship Series. There's uh, eight rounds, uh, one a month, pretty much, with a, a month or two break in the middle. But the, the series is run over eight rounds. And um, you have the opportunity to win a trophy at the end of the event if, you, if you're a winner or runner-up. And, of course, uh, all your championship points to accumulate. I can see Cody down there in the viewing area. Looks like his dad's behind the wheel of Mang 4 Litre on this pass, and looks like it'll be in the burnouts as well a little bit later, which is awesome. Speaking about burnouts, big hello to Bryce from Twin Lakes Automotive. How are you, brother? I can't wait to hang out at the workshop tomorrow. You know that means trouble when I come up. Of course, uh, a guy that used to do burnouts a long, long time ago, Shane Mullins, in a car formerly known as Mang Bang. Uh, He's up there as well. Shane and I go way back, and it's, it's good to catch up with all the burnout crew from the Central Coast about once a month. We've got the Yaguna Automotive Ute. Now, the guys last week were giving me a bit of a rib up about the tyre shine they were putting on it. Uh, but mind you, it looked clean, and Steve and I both appreciate nice, clean cars. Yeah, definitely, because <laughs> it's, not, it's not absolutely critical, but it's always nice if your car's clean. It's good for good for at least a tenth of a second and, and a couple of mile an hour as well. It's also good too for our photographers too, who uh, tend to get some fantastic shots of all the cars too. What? 2.05 and 60 there for the Yaguna Automotive V6 powered Ute, and he goes 11.18. Is that turbo or no? Uh, I could hear something. Um, I think it's a turbo. 
I think it it's, might def- be it's definitely not standard. No. <laughs> 11.8 with an A1. 34 mile an hour, Stewie. I only just noticed that. 134 mile an hour. That uh, should be good enough for uh, a, a, an early uh, an early 10, I reckon. Not too far away from it. A 10.50, maybe. Now, tonight's Aeroflow race for real, guys, because it is the first Aeroflow race for real for the month. It is proudly supported by Motive Video. And Andrew Hawkins is here tonight. And no doubt he'll be doing some features on some cars and having a walk around, get some great photos. Go onto YouTube at the end of tonight and make sure you check out the last little snippet that he did from last month. There were some fantastic shots, some great interviews as well. And uh, it's great to have Andrew here tonight. We've got a couple of nuisance here tonight. We've got one GDR down on track, but he's taking on a GR Yaris, which, um, as Steve, you and I both know, these things are no slouches, whether they're highly modified or... Even not. even out of the box, they're, uh, they're pretty stout little car, but, uh, of course, the uh, one that was running here last week, running into the ho- uh, low 10-second zone, and um, was lucky enough to see that car in action uh, across the road nice. on um, Saturday night, of course, as well. This one... 1349 with a 602 mile an hour. Not a bad run to a 1533 with a 7 for the Nissan in the rocket lane on that pass. But uh, yeah, Andrew Hawkins been around um, uh, DVD production and, and and motorsport in general for as uh, for as long as I can remember. Uh, and always very very enthusiastic and and certainly knows his stuff and and no stranger to um, big horsepower um, Nissan products as well. No, he's not. Well, I'll tell you what, we're very lucky tonight. Not only have we got a great looking Evo number plates with Tavoro, but we've also got a very nice looking rotary in green. And uh, Ben, please, it's ro- it's a rotary, you know, it's 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 music. I mean, there's people that watch our live streams that love love the rotaries as well. So they are not Taylor Swift. Thank you very much. Well, I don't know how I don't know how you go with that, Ben, because I think they I think they announced on um, on the news this morning that she's made the Forbes super rich people, yeah, richest people in the world, 1.1 billion or something. She's oh wow! <laughs> so <laughs> well, a little right. It's going to take the win here, Stu. Fourteen thirty-two. To a 14.07. And just while we're here tonight, guys, we're talking about people that have been around the scene a long time as well. Great to see Vic here tonight as well. He's just having a chat to our starting team because uh, Vic's been around the drag scene for a very, very long time. Also, he's still a podcast. Uh, a couple of years ago on drag racing, and I love that show. I wish they'd bring it back because uh, it was very, very informative. But um, look, they're a great bunch of guys. But tonight, this is what I've come to see. We've got two Honda Civics, both of them same generation. Two very different styles in uh, in modification. Of course, the one in the uh, in the rocket lane uh, uh, definitely been resprayed. Certainly a an interesting colour palette with the white wheels, but it uh, looks pretty sharp down there on the racetrack, nice and clean. Yeah, we've, we've seen the Hondas out. I mean, we've had the Civic, the older model was Civics. We've had the Integras. Um, but this particular model was Civic. We don't see a lot of these. And a bit of tie spin off the line for the black Civic. But um, both of them out getting their first run under their belt. 15.08 there for the Rocket Lane to a 17.22. Oh, I was going to say, where was that spray uh, sound coming yeah, from? So I've just seen a big purge yeah, out of the Falcon Wagon in yeah, the Rocket Lane. Yeah, so this Falcon Wagon, I was with Ben, and we were actually down in the pits having a chat with Sammy Joe, and uh, he lifted up the boot, and he was strapping in the nitrous bottle. It's got a stock standard barometer in it. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> and how big a shot of nitrous is going through? Seventy-five hit. Yeah, okay. Shot of nitrous. Just to see what it'll do. He's up against thirty-two R, the R thirty-two Skyline, affectionately known as Godzilla. But keep an eye on the Falcon. I'm interested to see how this thing goes with a stop motor in it and a nice shot of nitrous. Five. 
point. 08 seconds to the 330 for the skyline. He goes on through with a 1085 at 142. Yeah, wow. Big speed there, 142 and a half mile an hour for the skyline in the aeroflow lane there, Shu. There's certainly a fair bit left in that at a 1085. And not a bad run for the uh, for the wagon there. Now we've got the hot rod down here up yeah, against very, the Civic. Very nice. I'm not quite sure if it's a Dodge or a, uh, a Chev. It's not a, a Ford body style, but uh, 1933-34 sedan. Very, very nice looking car. Haven't seen it out here at Sydney Dragway. Taking on the uh, Honda in the in the rocket lane. The hot rod all nice and crossed up past the 60 foot spinning the wheels. <laughs> Certainly left with the uh, a fair amount of vigour on the start line. Not too shy that some issues for the uh, Honda in the rocket lane there though. 1373 with a 7 101 for the hot rod. And it appears the Honda just rolling on through now. Well, we got Sleeper back out here tonight, Steve. This very tough VF Commodore, the SS. And he's taking on another SS, VF Commodore. But uh, we've seen Sleeper out here a few times before. And. Uh, it, sleep at number plates, but I'll tell you what, it goes super quick. Yeah, so, <laughs> sounds like there's a uh, turbo under the bonnet for Sleeper in the rocket lane. A couple of pedals on the throttle for the Aeroflow lane. <laughs> and he'll run on through for an 11.47 with a 7, 129 miles an hour through the finish line. Oh. And the rocket lane, 987 with a 3, 147 miles an hour. Very quick, quick pass there. Yeah, that was a great pass there from Sleeper. Almost looked effortless off the start line. Sammy Joe out there now in her manually shifted Commodore. An 031 on the tree there for Sammy, 1.97. But I'll tell you what, the uh, Caprice next to her, 1.61 in the 60. And it goes 10 at 76 with a 5. Yeah, wow. 120, wow. 128 mile an hour through the finish line to a 13 one, one at 110 for Sammy Joe in the rocket lane there. That's not the Area 51 car, is it? No, that's not. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I only say that because there's not that many uh, black statesmen no, statesmen or caprices no. that run, and we know um, no. Ethan normally runs not too far from that sort of ET. Yeah, he runs low 11s. That one definitely intense. Well, we've got the Pro Street Cartel in the house, in the Falcon, and taking on this very quick, unassuming VR VS Commodore. A 1063 there to an 1195, 128 miles per hour in the Aeroflow lane as the AMG comes out now. Looking nice with the black paint, gold wheels. That's gangster. I like that. It is very much gangster. What's on the rim on the um, passenger side front there? But uh, anyway, strong burnout from the racer in the Aeroflow lane. Of course, early times here at Sydney Dragway. Jump on the phone, jump on uh, social media, get your friends out here to race. All they need is a helmet, long sleeve uh, top, long pants, covered shoes, uh, and a license. Lots of wheel spin for the AMG off the start line in the rocket lane. Oh, come on, Will. <laughs> oh, well, we all knew it was coming, Stuart. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> so, but... Well, we've got a super sedan down here in the rocket lane about to take on the top sportsman 180SX Nissan with the S15 front. Now, Joseph's got the supercharger plugged up tonight, Steve. Ah, it didn't last week, did he? No, didn't have it last week. This week he's actually put the belt on. He said he's um, still getting used to driving it. Yes. Um, but now that he's got the belt on it, and he mentioned last week, Steve, that he... With a two-step on this car, he's got to get in late. Yes. So it'd be interesting to see the difference between the NA setup and now with the supercharger on it, how he goes about the two-step and and launching the car. Well, I mean, you know, Joe's got several of these cars all set up somewhat differently. 
Um, yeah. So, and, and being supercharged, of course, I don't know with the Pro Charger if there is any sort of lag at all, whether it's as, as uh, efficient in, in building boost as what the what a, what a roots, roots type or a, a screw type blower would be. Benny's just saying it's pretty much instant. So, uh, I, you know, I, I guess getting up on the two step would be just a matter of a little bit of practice um, and, and timing, as you say. Letting go of the button a little bit too early there. Certainly on a good run though. And nine, double zero with a nine. 157 mile an hour for Sabello in the airflow lane there. And a 10 one two with a one at 131 miles an hour for the rocket lane there. Yeah, good pass there from Joe. All right, we're into the bikes. And what a way to kick the bikes off with a couple of Harleys. Ah, oh, man, I wish we could commentate from outside. I could do, my eardrums could do with a bit of a workout from a Harley at the moment. You want another year bashing, do you? Oh, yeah, why? Well, weekend? Yeah, uh, actually, funnily enough, they, I, my ears were actually all right after the weekend. Um, I was a little bit surprised. Normally, there's a couple of burnout cars that tend to get the old ear going like that, but uh, no. Yeah, especially when you're, when you're standing next to, next to a blown car bouncing off the limiter or something like that. It's... Uh, it can be a, a different frequency sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the LSs that they run these days, you know, they're not like the old engines where, you know, they can sit them and they be, they sound good when they're on limiter. They yep. sound a bit iffy. But that's that's the nature of the beast. Everybody's going the LS. Now, uh, we've got the red lights flashing. <laughs> I was going to say, I wouldn't mind betting that we've got a couple of furry friends down there somewhere. Of course, that is this time of the afternoon that they are out and about. Yeah, we should start charging for admission, I think, mate. <laughs> that, uh, you know. Oh, OK. All right, the two Harleys, one with the ape hangers, one with the standard. I know which one I'd ride. Definitely not the one with the ape hangers. Oh, but, uh, straight in. I think you left the door open a bit for that, Stu. Doing a good job. 1.78 in the 60 on, in the rocket lane. Goes 11.34 to a 12.37. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love I love the Harleys when they go down the track, especially in the street in the street scene. At this level. The top level, I, I love all the bikes, but those four-cylinder top fuel bikes are just unbelievable. Ah, that's, that's what floats your boat when oh. talking top fuel motorcycle. Oh, yeah. Of course, you'll be able to see top fuel motorcycle in a couple of weeks here at Sydney Dragway, Stu. Yeah, actually, speaking about that, Steve, um, Chris Bones. Yes? Actually put a post up on Facebook and told everyone, hey, guys, in no uncertain terms, let's race. Get your bikes out. Let's race. It's yeah. good. It's fantastic to see. <laughs> All right, Michael Richards on board the AMS Watermeters 750 Jexar. He wants to get this bike into the eights. Now, that's a big... It's a big jump from a nine to an eight, but hey, look, anything's possible. 1.64 in the 60, 0.055 on the tree there for Michael. G'day, Jeff. How are you, mate? Tuning in via the live stream. 9.90 to a 1034. Yeah. Nine, nine, 990 exactly is what a super gas car is looking for in uh, super gas competition. Well, thank you very much. Uh, UFO Sorcery Engineering says the best drag racing show ever. Thank you very much, UFO Sorcery, Sorcery Engineering. That's very kind. Very kind words, mate. <coughs> oh, no. Just we won't say you use the name a few times, so <laughs> it's a little bit of a duck tire. Yeah. Well, it doesn't help either that I wasn't looking at the screen. Now this will be interesting. I uh, this bike's got a race number on it. I heard them doing a little bit of tuning down in the pits. Now, effectively... If, if my memory serves me correct, <coughs> Stu, and I am working off memory... And, is this and, an outlaw and, bike? And, and, and the white leathers, I think this one of the Franks... 
clean. There's quite a few um, Franks run in uh, modified bike and I think extreme bike as well. There was um, three or four of them racing here at the uh, Speed Attic Clothing Co. Championship. <laughs> oh. Way with a little bit of a uh, pedal on the start line over towards the wall but uh, working his way back towards the middle of the racetrack and runs on through for a 916. 145 mile an hour through the finish line. Now, I haven't been around the uh, New South Wales State Champ scene for a little while, but I haven't seen this car in a, a long, long time. Well, that makes two of us. And uh, it is good to see it back out on track, getting a little bit of racing mileage under its belt. Well, 1.54 in the 60. Did seem a little bit, a little bit fumy on the start line there, Stu. So I don't know. Um, it does have a nitrous sticker on the back, I think. So uh, maybe just not uh, atomising the nitrous quite as well as it would have liked. But out of the throttle, probably uh, 300 feet from the start line, and uh, pretty much rolled on through from there. All right, we got the. XR6 Falcon down there doing a nice strong burnout, but you know what? He's taking on the mighty Mazda MX-5. Now, you may laugh when I, that, when I say that comment, but hey, I know the Mazda isn't going to beat the Ford, but in a reaction time, the Mazda could beat him. He certainly so, could. He certainly could. <laughs> but that's not a good sign when he's going that slow off the start line, which has got me a little bit worried. I don't know if uh, maybe stalled on the start line there, Stu, but the Falcon will get there first. 14.19 with a 500 mile an hour through the finish line. And the Mazda got there good speed. So that tells me uh, it's probably really a mid-13 in that car. Yeah, I wish my Mazda 2 ran mid-13s. Well, they could. You just need to get the wallet out, mate. I need to put the 2 litre out of the MX-5 into the 2 and give the 1.5 litre back to nah, that car. you know what you do. K-swap it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. If I had a million bucks, I'd no, just, you know, you know, call you Benny Tran. Hey, Benny, can you put a K swap into my Mazda 2? Hey, we've got Gus Boy <laughs> down here in the rocket lane. Now, if that's the Gus Boy, I think it is. He was here on the weekend for the burnouts, for Good Friday burnouts. Does a pretty good burnout in the Navara just quietly, but uh, he's taking on the old Holden wagon, which is a great car. We love seeing that car here at Sydney Dragway. I think. Yep. Pretty rare car, the, the, the uh, station wagon in this shape. 064 on the tree to an 049 red for the Navara. Two one seven to the 60 for the wagon. And runs on through for a 13.8 at 102 mile an hour. And an 18.24 at 77 for the Navara in the rocket lane. Just like to say a quick hello to Darren Duke who's tuning in and, and watching the live stream as well. G'day Daz, haven't seen you for a while mate, where have you been? Uh, it's good to see Daz, of course uh, I've known Darren for a long long time through the Ute scene and also coming out here to Sydney Dragway with him as a spectator as well. Well, we've got Danny Sadelmeyer in the Greyhound Rescue Toyota Kluger. Taking on the Falcon in the rocket lane. What was that? UFO Sorcery Engineering. Don't say the word barra. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha. <laughs> well, to be, <laughs> to be fair, UFO Sorcery Engineering, there is that barra that's racing tonight. I believe it's got that nitrous on it. So, hey, he's out there. He's having a little bit of fun. Well, we've got a barra on the racetrack right now, Stu. 012 on the tree as well. <laughs> oh, Bank look out. Banked a really good reaction time this, uh, early on in the evening. 1475 with a 396 miles an hour through the finish line. G'day, TG. How are you, mate? Welcome to the live stream. Oh, yeah, get those limiter fingers happening for the burnout. The old Mang 4 litre. 
They love their burnouts as much as their drag racing, and father and son have both taken away reaction time prize money in the last four weeks here at Sydney Dragway. And they're just out here just about every week in this car, they too. Are pretty much, yeah. It doesn't, doesn't get an easy time, too, just quietly. Manually shifted. Yep. Yeah, David Ryan out there. And taking on the little Mitsubishi Lancer, which got out in 60 with a 2.54. And goes 15.50, 14.79 there for David. As with the Yaguna Automotive Ute, is back out, Hypo 6, and he's taking on the GR Yaris. Oh. Jeff Van Loo said, skids for the win. Oh, yeah. So don't forget, guys, if you're thinking about coming out, guys, make sure you tell your mates to come out because Hawko is wandering around and he's got his cameraman here tonight as well. So if you want to get your car featured, potentially on, on the Motive Video YouTube page, make sure you get your car here for number one. Yeah, Secondly, come. you're racing. Yes. And two, hunt hunt down Hawko. You can't miss him. He's six foot something tall. He looks like the big version of me because he's got the same coloured hair as I do so um, you know you can't miss him only he's wearing a motive shirt and I've got a Sydney Dragway shirt on and I'm twins. probably you're twins mate. yeah we're both as loud as each other but uh, you know get out there guys bring your car or your bike get yourself featured of course tonight's Aeroflow race for real proudly supported by a motive video <laughs> as the P players out the VO oh what a scared get that happening son yeah, strong burn out from the VL in the Aeroflow lane there, Stu. Nice. I, w I wish we had a window. Then we could get, like, tie that, smoke that, in here. That we could open, you mean? Well, yeah, that's true. Uh, just the awning window, so it scoops it inside. Absolutely. Be like being a good Friday every night. Well, <laughs> the, the VL off the line with a 2.41. The Falcon Ute out with the 2.62 and the 60. And the Ute running on through with the 12.89 at 126. And the VL with the 16.39. 83 miles per hour as we got the Nissan up against the rotor. It ain't a motor unless it's a rotor. And it's got the venetians in the back good stuff i like that it's got yeah, a bit <laughs> little capella this one. Oh, i love the old capellas i shut my eyes i'm going to still remember toy 12a came from that was built by race solutions up at penrith years ago it sounds like one of those cars not running ideally i think perhaps the uh the uh, Mazda there, but the Skyline through with a 14 2 0 91 miles an hour through the finish line. And a 17 64 there for the Mazda. Big boy Blakey has just joined the chat. G'day, Blakey. And yes, we do have burnouts tonight, mate. We've got one of our cars that's racing tonight. We'll be on the burnout pad a little bit later. We've got the Honda Civic about to take on the Evo. I'll tell you what, just up here in the studio, we've got a camera that focuses on the uh, staging lanes out the back. Okay. We've got a really great shot of that hot rod out down there. You reckon it's a Dodge, Steve? No, it's a Chev. It's a Chev, is it? It's, it's a uh, 30, 34 Chev sedan. Pretty cool looking car. Of course, a lot of steel there. Oh, yeah. uh, ran pretty strong as well. A lot, little bit of uh, wheel spin off the start line, but I'm sure uh, that'll get sorted out as the night progresses. I reckon they look cool. Oh. <laughs> no, uh, no, a soccer mum's car is an SUV, and that's Harry's mountain bike. Oh, Harry's a mountain biker. Top staff. 
I wish my bike was still running, Harry, then I could get out in trails as well. But uh, we got two Honda Civics down on track. Pretty close this one, Stu. They're nearly locked <laughs> together at a thousand. The Aeroflow Lane just pulling away at the end. 14.58 with a 1. 102 mile an hour. Got there by just over a tenth of a second to uh, the mint green version in the Rocket Lane there. Uh, we've got a little Toyota Corolla. Yeah, a little K55 in the Rocket Lane. Top staff. <laughs> Taking on the Falcon in the Aeroflow. Every time I see one of those, first car that comes to mind is illegal. Of course, Mick Brusher, Brusher Nuts coming up in June. Make sure you keep your eyes on their page and also the Sydney Dragway Facebook page as well. There's already been a few cars that have entered for Brusher Nuts as the little Corolla gets a little bit squirrely in the first 60 foot, goes yeah. 1.88. I don't think it's standard, Stu. <laughs> Certainly not standard. He's going to do a pretty good number here. And 11.97 with a 7, 119 mile an hour through the finish line. Thank you. To a 12 at 27 with a 7 at 123 for the Falcon in the aeroflow lane there. That was a wicked pass there yeah, from the was. Corolla. Manually shifted too by the look of it. That was sick. I, I can hear another rotor motor. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not either of these two. <laughs> well, it shouldn't be. <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> All those people that are down in the trackside viewing area, man, they've, they is, they've been enjoying this. What a night to come out for Aeroflow Race Real, proudly supported by Emotive Video. As we got the Focus up against the Volkswagen. Yeah, a bit of hot hatch action on the start line. 034 in the tree for the Focus. Out in front still of the, uh, of the, the Golf at the moment. I don't think the golf's not going to catch him, Stu. The focus pulling away, 12.98 with a 7, 113 mile an hour through the finish line to a 13.12 at 103. Ah, uh, TG, I separated my shoulder at Knapsack. Well, yeah, that, that can happen when you start to get um, air under your, both tyres on a mountain bike. Well, the Mazda Rotary, the inside of this, Steve, is so clean. Custom in white interior. Not something that I would like. I mean, the cleaning side of it would be too hard for my liking. A little bit of smoke coming out of it, though, at about 1,000 foot, but it runs on through to 1,379 at a 102 to a 1,354 at 115. It didn't seem to slow him too much. It was just around that mid-track section there, Stu. Just a little bit of fume out of the car, but uh, as I say, it didn't seem to slow its performance. And a 1,354 with a 6 in the rocket lane there. Now, I haven't seen one of these things in years. Little Mitsubishi. Ah, the old FTO. I was going to say FTO. I haven't seen one of these things on the streets of Sydney. Well, I'm pretty sure they were all imported. I don't, I don't. I think all the ones that we got here were all imported. They weren't a, a factory release car. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure, and that's why they're probably so rare here. Yeah. Still a great looking car though, aren't they? I mean, they still that body shape really has stood the test of time. And first timer, so number one, welcome to Aeroflow Race for Real. It's great to see another first timer out here. And he's taking on the VE Commodore. <laughs> UFO Sorcery Engineering said Honda Leaky Machine. <laughs> I take it you're not a Honda fan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, live chat is going off at the moment on YouTube and Facebook so uh, you know if your friends can't make it here to the track guys make sure you get them to tune in but hey there's nothing better than being here at the track 100% Stu this is where action takes place you get a slightly uh, obviously different vibe here at the track you, the, the sights the sounds and the smells of course now, I like the sticker on the back of this Falcon. Bald, rusty bastard. So, okay. <laughs> well, you yeah, know, the driver. He might be bald. Was the rusty as he read here? Well, maybe both. Yeah, that's right. Hey, that's yeah, it's, it's compli more complicated than it seems. <laughs> or perhaps are we just overthinking it? <laughs> maybe we're overthinking it. <laughs> 
at uh, 75 shot of nitrous on board the Falcon. Now, if this engine blows up, apparently he's got another engine to go in it. So it's not all bad, but I was thinking, as I said to Ben, if he wants to blow the engine up, don't put it on the dragway, put it on the burnout pad. Well, uh, it's obviously a little bit of an inconvenience over there too, but, but yeah, sure, why not? Well, barrows don't like burnouts. So... Says who, Stu? Says who? Well, um, can you speak in engine, can you? Yeah. I speak to them in Mazda and they go, no, nah! <laughs> like this, so it's all right. <laughs> Uh, ooh, uh, it's an RC car, said. The only Honda you see in the UK are Honda Jazzers. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, we used to see a fair few of them here in Sydney as well, and uh, I know in Japan there's a few modified ones that actually look all right, just quietly. Oh, Sammy Joe chased the light again, the hot rod away cleanly this time. Moving over to the right-hand side of the lane, though. Almost neck and neck with the Commodore. I think the Commodore is out in front at the moment. Sammy Joe should get there first. A 12.54 with a 1. 1.15 to a 12.98 with a 2 at 103. For the hot rod, I dare say all that uh, pushing that extra air probably hurt the um, speed a little bit there. Yeah, well, it probably had the aerodynamics of brick. but um, oh, Probably two bricks. Yeah, together, so I reckon. absolutely. All right, we've got two very tough holdings. We've got the VZ Commodore down there in the rocket lane taking on the Caprice the Caprice has already run into the tans 1.60 oh in the 60 this time the Commodore did a really good burnout started to wind it up from about 70 foot but the Caprice is out of there 1079 127 100 and, I was about to say 118 11.80 126 all right the AMG is back out and he's taking on this very tough VRVS Commodore yeah I saw the driver of the AMG just lowering the tyre pressures I think and the staging lanes there is scratched the underside the back wheel so I dare say either taking the pressure or, or reducing it well I'll tell you what that Commodore yeah. out with the 1.55 in the 60 nice and straight down the Aeroflow lane huge thanks to Aeroflow performance for their continued support of a race for real here at City Dragway in a 10.54.129. Thank you very much. The Holden goes, ha ha, you might be Euro, but I can still beat you. And we've got the Ford Capri down here now, about to take on Baller, who's uh, got a little bit of help from the Kalidi Clothing Company, who Steve, on good, at Good Friday, they had the whole flotilla of Kalidi Motorsport burnout cars out here, and they also had a stand up the top okay. selling merchandise and they, apparently they sold out well that's fantastic that, that they all got uh, came out and um, out in force and, and you know, were able to, to sell their merchandise to their fans and of course that always helps whenever you see a racer or a, a, a burnout enthusiast uh, selling merchandise of course it is a little bit of a money spinner of course that they are going to make a little bit of money out of yep. what they're selling you but uh, certainly by all means it's gone back into the car or bike or whatever tenfold <laughs> over what you're giving them uh, but uh, it's fantastic that they're able to come out and sell out their stock they did well that Capri Steve just went 1088 down the track now we've got this very tough black track motorsport Falcon I'm gonna go on a limb and say XE but I tell you what it's got a parachute on the back so we know it's quick and he's taking on one of the Pro Street Cartel flotilla of cars, the Falcon. Beautiful looking car, that one. Always has been. We keep your eyes on the Black Track Motorsport Falcon. Little bit of attitude off the start line. Half track, 585 on the brakes. And goes yeah, 903 wow. with a 5 at 140. Yeah, look at that thing move at the top end of the racetrack, Stu. Went 159 to the 60. He was 127 mile an hour at half track. The, the Holden in the uh, Aeroflow lane, 1190, uh, 11.79 with a 6 there. So certainly not a sl slow car, but the Falcon, uh, once it got on boost, yeah, catch me if you can. That Falcon is awesome. Love it. All right, got the Harley back out in the Aeroflow lane. A little pop of the oh. front wheel. 
looked a little bit unsteady there when the wheel came back down on the ground. I think, I think the rider was trying to get the foot back on the peg at the same time. 11.74 with a 0, 115 mile an hour through the top end to a 12 double O's due at uh, 1.11 for the rocket lane there. Yeah, that would have grabbed your attention on the ape hangers. That literally would have been like hanging off a tree like an ape, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, I would, I would have been sliding on the ground, I reckon. Oh, I reckon I would have been too, just quietly. 2G's asking Steve, what's the lockout for no cage car? Well, it depends on the age of the car, TG. I think it's 10, it's 10 5 in ET. Yep. Um, and then uh, if you later model car with airbags and all the mod cons, is um, 10 0. 10 0. Yep. 104, 140 mile an hour. Yep. Yep. So I hope that answers your question, TG. Because, I mean, just to put that in perspective to all of our younger viewers, 100 mile an hour is about 160 kilometres an hour. So, you know, you've got a car that's doing 140. That's that's 220 k's an hour, so more than double the, uh, the, the highway speed limit. 016 red on the tree for Michael Richards. It went 990 before. 993 with a 1, 138 mile an hour there to a 997 with a 7 at 146. Yeah, great to see our motorcycle riders out supporting Aeroflow Race for Real tonight. We used to get a great amount of motorcycle riders come out. Of course, Sydney Random Riders, they've been a big supporter of Aeroflow Race for Real for a long time. And on that subject, uh, one of their members, it's her birthday coming up soon too, Eloise. So Eloise, if you're watching, happy birthday. Unfortunately, I can't make your birthday party due to work, but I'm sure you will have an amazing night. <coughs> Just call in sick, mate. <laughs> yeah, no. Nah. Nah. Word gets around too, too quick where I... Ah, oh, because you don't want to be one of those people that gets talked about. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Fair. <laughs> Yeah. Rocket was at my birthday party. I, yeah, thought you you just said you, I thought you said you were sick. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, sick of work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we could fix that, Mr. White. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. All right, the Falcon Bandit back out against the MX-5. The Falcon get busted or what? No, I don't think he did because I believe that car has actually got a roll cage in it. And it's got a parachute on the back as well, so which which means it should be teched. <laughs> Thanks, TG. <laughs> Appreciate that. I'll, I'll send a memo out, mate. Well, what's TG doing? Going to your birthday party or going to work for you? Which hey, is well, yeah, well, that's true. TG, if you want to go for work for me, that's fine. As long as you can deal with um, customers and and cook, it's fine. But uh, fourteen one there for the mighty Mazda to a fourteen zero. For the Falcon. Yeah, three tenths of a second across the finish line there. All that was in the reaction times, I think. But uh, there we go. That's a more uh, representative pass for the Mazda Stu. Yeah, that's great. The Nissan Navara Gus Boy out there now in the rocket lane. I will I will just say that you take the Mazda next door here and go around a few corners, I dare say uh, you'd be appreciating its um, nimbleness. Yeah, it's funny, you know. You know... The Mazda 2s, there's a little bit of common engineering side of it with the MX-5 as there is with the 2. Obviously, the MX-5 is a much better car through the corners. But, you know, the gearbox that I uh, that they run, the 2s run, they're virtually the exact same gearbox that they run in the MX-5. So there's not a huge amount of difference. It's just more ones in a, in a much better shaped car and... It's uh, much more stable through the corners. Well, certainly a, a pretty low centre of gravity. Not, yeah. not the most uh, outrageously uh, powered car, but no, they, they make up right. for it in there uh, in being nimble and light yeah. um, through the corners. But, uh, of course, we have seen a number of people modify them back in the day, putting Lexus V8s in them and all that, which would have been, that would <laughs> an have been absolute exciting. Weapon, weapon of a car in a straight line. Wow. Probably hurt the cornering a little bit, but, you know, um, you make up for that when you put your foot down. <laughs> Yeah. Well, of course, uh, Michael L. Curry, Laugh Out Loud 13B. 
Yes, that's, that was right too, Ben. That's exactly right. You're talking about the... Um, if Lexus V8 wasn't enough, we'll go and put a couple of hair dryers on it just to, um, just to be sure that it's... Just to, yeah, just to spice it up a bit. Uh, TG, as far as I know, that Navara is diesel. So, uh... All right. The GR Yaris out with a 1.99 in the 60. Small stock standard one. It goes 14.09. Still very, very good. And it's got the Falcon Ute about to take on the VL. The VL pumping out a good amount of smoke. Once again... Once again, the uh, Falcon Ute just doing a nice slow burnout, of course. Wanting to make sure those tyres get hot, but the problem is, I guess, with the big burnouts on a street tyre, not always uh, will produce a good ET. That's right. Although, it's a bit of fun, of course. Oh, absolutely. But if you don't want to put the car on the burnout pad, that is the next best thing. As evidenced by Mang 4 Leader, it does both. Well, the Ute with a 12.24, 1.25 to a 16.44 there. 1644 there for the VL. Ah, uh, put your hands together for Mang 4 Leader, ripping it up in the burnout. <laughs> TG said, Benji, can we have wasp cam, please? Laugh out loud. <laughs> uh, great stuff. Well, Mank 4 Leader about to take on the little rotary. And 1.93 in the 60 this time. And runs on through with the 1444, 1548. As we've got an earlier model Honda Civic Type R coming out now against Judy R. Little bit of wheel spin out of the uh, the skyline in the airflow lane. Just hazing the tyres. Looks like the Honda will get there first. 14 1 1 with a 2 1 0, a 2 mile an hour through the finish line to a 14 4 5 with a 5 at 101 for the skyline. Yeah, go the Honda. Sorry, did I sound biased then? Um, not at all. Oh, thank you. Not at all. It's not, if if it you was, like Hondas. Not yeah, at all. well. <laughs> Thanks. Of course, absolutely nothing <laughs> wrong with Hondas. One of uh, w one of the cars was getting quite a bit of attention on uh, Saturday night. It was a um, Honda CRV, oh, wow. little um, a little SUV running across the road um, in, in like a candy red. Went a few rounds in eliminations. It was absolute sleeper. I, I would have liked it to have just been white. I think it would have been um, less standout if it was just a plain colour. But yeah, yeah. Uh, certainly. Uh, not standard by any stretch of the imagination. I'd, I would have liked to have seen the horsepower figures, but... Uh, oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Benji. LS Lion down there now in the rocker lane. He's about to take on this Toyota Corolla. Yeah, I think he ran into 11 nines on his last pass. Let's see what uh, see what he can do this time around. DJ Pouse was saying, so has got a question for me asking, can we book a lane for the night? If we come down as a car club, you yes, sure you can. can. All you got to do, DJ Prouse, or anybody for that matter that wants to come down with their car group, just ring the office before you come. Just make them aware that you've got about 10 or so cars. Yeah, give uh, us a little bit of warning, yeah. of course, but yeah. Yep. And we can all book you into one lane. And you can race your mates. This Corolla is so impressive. 1197. Pretty consistent too. It is. Great little package he's got there. Now, what 
is this thing down here in the rocket lane, Steve? I was going to say an Escort, but I don't think it is, is it? No, it's not. It's a, a 1200 sedan, little Datto. Little Datto. Pretty clean looking thing with uh, Venetians on the rear window. I can't say I've seen it here at Sydney Dragway before. Looking really, really nice in the, um, in the light blue. Yeah, it's a great looking car, I'll tell you. Ooh, ah, uh, it's an RC car. It says, can you say hi to Fraser and Esther? Absolutely, Steve and I can do that. How are you, Fraser? How are you, Esther? I hope you're enjoying all the action tonight from Sydney Dragway. Aeroflow Race for Real, the Rocket and the Bushman in commentary tonight. And the little Dano, 1551. That's sick. Love it. You love yeah, it, was, it wasn't too much in the uh, at the finish line, of course. The little Dado getting gobbled up right at the finish line there. But uh, looking forward to seeing that car do another run or two here tonight. Of course, uh, on track now we have the early model Mazda sedan. I th think a 929. I'm not sure the the series on these. I think that's seriously cool. I love the old school um, rear view mirrors yeah, on, on the, the front too. It's got the full too. JDM style yeah. uh, mirrors on it. It's got the sun visor on it as well. That's sick. <laughs> Grandpa's pink. <laughs> that is cool. We're, we're so lucky here at City Dragway, as Steve and I and Mark mention all the time. You know, we never know what's going to come through the gates week to week. And when you get to see cool stuff like this, like we do tonight, that's what makes our commentary and all the people that are watching here at the track and everybody that's watching via Facebook and YouTube as well. And how good our street scene is. Sammy Joe out there now in the manually shifted Commodore. She's trying to run an 11, Steve. She wants to run an 11. She doesn't care if it's an 11, 9, 9, 9. She just wants to run an 11. She just wants the double one at the front of the time card. Yep. Oh. One five one red. Of course, the reaction time does not affect the ET of the car running down the racetrack. And what will she do? Twelve fifty nine with a zero one sixteen mile an hour. Two seventeen nine zero. In the airflow lane. Who needs Red Bull when you got the sound of an angry rotary down on track? Oh, that rotor is awesome. They say Red Bull gives you wings. Well, rotary gives me wings because I'm standing up and I'm like fully pumped now. So bring it on. Aeroflow race for real. The rocket has fired up for the night. The Bushman's fired up. What's in your water there? It's not It's not just water, is mate, it? Mate, that's, that's water all the way. That is like proper <laughs> H2O, mate. Everybody down in the viewing area, they're pumped as well. That's what we like to see. We like a good vibe on a Wednesday night. That we sure do, Stu. Of course, we're moving into uh, daylight savings uh, next week, so a little bit darker this time uh, around with the, the, the um, next week. But the action, I'm sure, will be uh, will be as exciting as always, but we will have to actually have next week off due to the uh, Diesel Dirt and Turf Expo that's happening here at Sydney Dragway <coughs> next week. Bryce just messaged me on uh, Messenger and said, I should get the Ram out there. Yeah, you should, yes. Bryce. Yes, uh, definitely uh, you should. I've got a better idea, Bryce. Why don't you get a set of brakes for the back of Whoops and take it down the drag strip? You know, your blown burnout car. Well, what does he need rear brakes for? He just well, he's going to be able to stop. Mm. You know? Parachute. Well, that's if it. 
I don't think it needs a parachute. I don't know if it'd go that quick for a parachute, but you know, it'd be a little bit of fun. Yeah. Blown burnout car. Definitely, <laughs> definitely, Stu. Looks like there's a little bit of uh, cleanup action happening in the uh, in the rocket lane down there now. I hope that didn't come out of the Mazda. Wow, uh, that was the last car that ran down. <laughs> Down that right down that lane, unfortunately. Damn it. Let's uh, hope nothing untoward. Ah, oh, the big hot rod ripping it up like they did in the 60s. I wasn't born in the 60s, but I'm guessing they ripped it up just like that well, back that, in the that's, 60s. That's a 34, so that would have 30, nearly 30 years old in the 60s, Stu. Uh, But they were cool back in then, back in those days in the sixties. It was rock and roll, you know. Oh well, yeah, it would have been it would have been a hot rod back in the sixties. Absolutely, you know. You had rockabilly, psychabilly, if you want to get technical. All right, getting a little bit crossed up out of the start line. The tallness of the body just accentuates the fact that it gets a little bit loose. Runs on through for thirteen oh eight this time around. One oh three mile an hour through the finish line to a 13.45 at 1.26. All right, we've got Fly 3 Leader down here in the Aeroflow lane. He's going to be taking on this very tough 10-second Caprice. Well, don't forget, guys, the first Wednesday of every month, Aeroflow Race For Real is supported by Motive Video. And if you want to get the car or bike featured, hey, you've got to come here and you've got to race. You've got to enter. Hawko will have the camera out and his cameraman will have the camera out as well. And uh, apparently there's actually a car group here tonight as well. That, uh, there's a what? A car club? A, a car club, sorry, that's okay. here as well. Um, apparently they've got a few cars on display. So that's great to see. That's that's what we're trying to encourage here at Sydney Dragway. And well, I mean, you. yeah, as you say, Stu, the, the car scene here in Sydney Dra or at Sydney Dragway and in Sydney in general is is absolutely massive. And the... the, um, the Drivers of those cars are always keen to get them out, whether it's racing, whether it's put it on display in a static, static show, and hang around and talk about the cars, even to, or just go on a run somewhere yep. casually. It's um, a fantastic scene. Another Mazda on the start line. Yeah. This one a uh, RX2, taking on the Commodore in the rocket lane. <laughs> TG asked Stewie, "Were you a greaser?" Well, I used to have a big rockabilly haircut. A very, very long time ago when I actually had brown hair. So, uh, and and I can actually sing as well. And I used to sing a bit of rockabilly. So uh, the answer is yes, TG. But uh, we got the V Commodore up against the Mazda. The Mazda's got the SICK 100 sticker on the rear window of it, which tells me that it's had a little bit of work to it. And a 1569 there. Look at the margin across the finish line. <laughs> wow. 47 ten thousandths of a second. <laughs> wow. I know we're not uh, racing with dial-ins and whatnot, but that's uh, probably about the the width of the tread on the tyre, I reckon, wow. 40, 47 ten thousandths of a second. We've got the R32 out there, Steve. 32R. And uh, be interesting to see how he goes. He's in the rocket lane for this pass, taking on the BMW. Well, I'll tell you what, the boomer out with a 1.81. The skyline there, Steve, a little bit of an issue off the start line. Don't know if it just had a bit of wheel spin. Yeah, but it's, coming, to... it's coming alive now, Stu, I can tell you that. Oh, yeah. 110 at half track. Wow. Runs on through for 13, 3, 136 miles an hour, <laughs> which tells me uh, somewhere in the low 10 seconds is what that car should run. Now, uh, it was doing 110 at half track. Um, Car in the aeroflow lane, 1287 with a one at 104 through the finish lane. Wow. That is one seriously quick car. Uh, just doing a quick quick little mop-up in aisle one. And then we've got the Mitsubishi FTO coming back out. I tell you what we might do, Stu, we might throw to our uh, to our big screen for some ads from some of our uh, very, very valuable sponsors here at Sydney Dragway. Stu and I will be back with you very, very shortly. Aeroflow, race for real. Speed Addict Clothing Co. Fast clothes for fast people. Shop now at speedaddictco.com.au.
a motoring enthusiast, Shannon's are giving you the chance to win a USA Supercars Drive experience at the Circuit of the Americas and Las Vegas racetracks. Drive a Ferrari, Lamborghini and Porsche. Visit Dallas, Austin, Las Vegas and LA. The trip for two includes airfares, luxury accommodation and $10,000 spending money for eligible Shannon's Club members. Plus, win a new Indian Motorcycle Sport Chief. To enter, take out new Shannon's insurance on your special car, daily drive, bike or home. Go online or call Shannon's on 13 46 46. You get time to think about life's big questions, like, where do all the flies come from? Do trains of thought have a destination? And another thing, how does an engine keep going out here? Well, that was an easy one. Not slow. Not difficult. Not just ticking boxes, not a bank. Talk to Australia's real-life non-bank for home loans, car loans, personal loans. Pepper Money, the home of loan options. Aeroflow Performance provides a wide range of high-quality performance products for races, street machines and hot rodders. Well, welcome back to Aeroflow Race for Real here at Sydney Dragway tonight, proudly supported by Motive Video. Andrew Hawkins and the team are wandering around the venue and getting some great content for their YouTube page, and it's great to have them on board once a month to help us out here at the track and encourage people to, with street cars to come out and race and, most of all, get off the street and do it safely now. Ooh, uh, it's an RC car. Uh, it's your birthday on Tuesday. So happy birthday, mate. You're 48 years young. Oh, uh, mate, you're still young. <laughs> happy birthday, mate. I hope you will have a good one. We're back into racing. And we've got the FG Falcon down here in the rocket lane about to take on the Holden Commodore, which is always a good, strong race car slash street car as well here at the track a very consistent car one that you do not really want to verse in competition because it is super consistent very very good package out of this car as we've mentioned previously it's got a bit of an old super stock look about it very high in the rear end of this car now we've got the fg x or the fg falcon having a little bit of a word not a problem rc car that is my pleasure my friend of course uh, myself the pocket rocket up in commentary tonight with the Bushman, and the Commodore out again with a 1.66 in the 60. 7.05 to half track, and a 10.94 at a 126. 
Great stuff there from the Commodore and a 12.35 at 115 there for the FG. As yeah, we've got the classic Holden versus Ford rivalry down on track. Now, a couple of people have just been asking, what is the theme night coming up here at Sydney Dragway? Of course, well, we had meant to have a theme night last month. Unfortunately, it got rained out. So we've we just moved what we had previ were previously going to do. We're going to move it here in next week or the couple of weeks. So new theme night coming up. Now, I must also say a big congratulations to Rob Cotterell, who uh, ended up taking out the pro burnout class here at Good Friday Burnouts. It was an absolutely killer skid. And, I mean, all the pro cars, they put in a fantastic event, as did the modified cars and street class. But the pro class, I tell you what, it was a tough one to, tough one to win. And a big congratulations to Rob there. And of course, keep it in your diaries, guys, because Brashenats will be coming up in June. Yeah, Scott would love a Fast Falls night. You know what? I actually would too. So, uh, of course, uh, I used to regularly buy Fast Falls and Rotary's magazine. Speaking about Fast Falls, we've got an FC RX-7 that'll be coming out very soon from Viz Rotary and it's also got a parachute on the back and looks like it's got a set of radials on it as well so uh, cannot wait to see what this thing's got for us but down on track now we've got a 13.10 for the Commodore in the rocket lane to a 10.81 at a 127 well the 10s they are coming thick and fast tonight we love quick street cars and anything in the 10s is still regarded as a very very quick car even after all these years a little bit of a mop up in aisle one ah <laughs> oh, tg ah oh, tg i don't buy anything off amazon thank you very much i don't really buy stuff off the internet full stop <coughs> I'm old school, I go to the shops and pay my money. We've got the AMG down on track in the Aeroflow lane, about to take on this Viz Rotary FC RX-7. The Rotaries have come out to play tonight, which is fantastic to see. So if you're a Rotary fan and you're online, you're thinking, oh, I don't know if I should have come to the track tonight. Yes, you should have come. Yeah, so our next theme night, guys, is Rotary versus V8. So for anybody that is watching via YouTube or Facebook or anybody here at the track, guys, that is our next theme night, Rotary versus V8. It's going to be like Benji versus me. The only difference is I've got a microphone and Benji doesn't. Ben's giving it to me. <laughs> All right, Smoke and Joe Sabello down on track now in the 180 SX. Uh, he's 
taking on this Holden Super Sedan. TG asks, how do we come and say hi if we come down to the strip, Stewie? Well, if you get here early enough, uh, you can catch me down in the staging lanes and uh, say good day. A little left to the left front wheel there. As Smokin' Joseph Bello goes 1.48, he's got the blower on tonight, and an 887, 156 miles per hour. Oh yeah, baby, Smokin' Joe is back in the house. That's what I'm talking about, and I'll tell you what, the super sedan down there in the rocket lane too, great pass from that car. This super sedan down here, a little bit fumy off the line. 1.61 in the 60. And it sounds like he's feathered off at around 1,000 foot. And he goes in 11.53 at 101 miles per hour. Bushy just warming his dinner up. And man, does it smell good. <laughs> oh, you... <laughs> DG, I went in down to see Benji. Benji's down the lanes as well. You can't miss him. <laughs> All right, we're back into the bikes. And a 1.9 turn to 60 there for the Aeroflow lane. And 11.51 to a 12.04 as the Harley is back out. Well, one of the Harleys is back out in the rocket lane. So if you just joined us here at the track, guys, if you're in the, in the lanes or in the stands, we do have burnouts tonight, guys. So we're having the burnouts a little bit later on. Oh, no 71 on the tree there in the rocket lane. That was a good reaction time. Good run too down the rocket lane and a 998 with a 9, 146 miles an hour to a 1020 at a 145. So once again, guys, if we do get enough entrance tonight, we will run the reaction time prize contest and we will confirm that a little bit later on. Of course, that runs to about a quarter to nine. We'll get confirmation of that a bit closer to the time, whether we've got enough people here to be able to run the reaction time contest. And then we'll run Pro Tree a little bit later. And of course, then we kick off with the burnouts around 9.30. Thanks, TG. I do like Tim Tams. Especially the double chocolate ones. They're my favourite. Uh, another couple of tough sounding Harleys about to come out now in the Aeroflow and the Rocket Lane. So no matter if you're a seasoned veteran like Joe Sabello or you're a first timer, everybody's got a chance at the reaction time prize contest. So keep your eyes on the tree, guys. 
We've had a few runs now to get your eyes in. We're on 11.42 to a 12.94 as Michael Richards comes out now in the aeroflow lane on board his stretched 750 Jexa. Okay. Now, this bike normally does run nitrous, but I don't know whether he's got the nitrous on board that bike tonight. He's taking on this very nice sounding Harley down here in the rocket lane. Oh, the Harley! The leg stuck out as he left the line. Oh, on he wanted the tree there for Michael Richards. And a 983 to a 10.10 there for the Harley. But I'll tell you what, the launch grabbed his attention. We're back into the cars. We've got the Mazda MX-5 in the aeroflow lane as Chef de Bushy makes his way back into the studio. And we got the Falcon back out again. It is just a, a frozen meal oh, too. They do smell pretty good. They do smell good, mate. too. Don't taste too bad either. I had to tell him for lunch, actually. Over it. Did you have to cook it yourself? No, I had it cooked for me. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, I went to a restaurant before I uh, came out tonight. Nice. <laughs> no, you fancy pants going for. Well, I do Lunch enough. to a restaurant, well, eh? I do, I do enough cooking during the week so people can cook for me for a change. It's good. Yeah, fair. All fair. right, Gus Boy is out there in the Navara, ripping it up. Of course, I'm really hoping we're going to have a four-wheel drive night, theme night coming up soon because... Uh, yeah, you're in your element with the theme nights. If well, only they did a four-wheel drive burnout night, burnout uh, day. That'd be sick. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, on Facebook, Lydia, who... Uh, comes out here she races her Navara unfortunately she uh, damaged the turbo on that car but uh, she's got it fixed uh, she said she wished she was here tonight but unfortunately she couldn't make it but uh, hopefully we'll see Lydia back here at Aeroflow race for real in the not too distant future or at one of our state champ rounds further down the track as well in her 13B powered Mazda RX-7 as Danny Stadawa comes out now in the Greyhound Rescue Toyota Kluger And he's taking on this Commodore, which has had a bit of work done to it by Highcom. Of course, Highcom, not too far away from the track here, and they do a lot of great work for LS Motors. <laughs> yeah, they did. They had a Falcon. Yeah, they had a Falcon out here, actually, with uh, a bit of work done to it by Highcom. Danny Stadermeyer out with an 038 on the tree. And the Commodore... Goes around him at half track and the aeroflow lane with 13.23 at 107 to a 15.47. As we got the Falcon about to come out now against the GR Yaris. We haven't seen the GR Corolla that was out here a couple of months ago. I haven't seen that car out here racing lately. Of course, I do like to see that style drag race. We've got the Corolla up against Yaris. Of course, both of them running virtually the same engine combination and gearbox combination, just slightly different body, maybe a touch more weight than the Corolla. But the GR Yaris running on through with a 1371 at 101 as the little green rotor is back out and is taking on this Falcon Ute. Well, the Falcon having a little bit of a problem just getting the wheels to turn as he's come out of the water. The little master has been running consistently all night. 
just taking it very easy off the start line out of that car. The Ute out with a 2.04. I'm guessing that Mazda might possibly be manually shifted. <laughs> but a 13.51 there for the Ute to a 17.41 there for the Mazda. Uh, it's got the Honda Civic Type R about to come out against the Skyline. So I wonder if this skyline is work in progress. It's got the uh, the primer colour paint on it, so maybe the owner preparing this car ready for a colour change and a new respray. Because uh, GDR Festival is coming up in the not too distant future either here at Sydney Dragway, and that is brought to you by Motive Video. We've got some of the baddest skylines in the country making their way here to Sydney Dragway, and of course. They do have an international car, as far as I'm aware, that is coming out as well from Japan. So, guys, make sure you jump on the Motive Video Facebook page and keep up to date with what's happening for GTR Festival. It's going to be a sensational day. All right, we've got this Toyota Corolla back out in the rocket lane, taking on the Volkswagen. Well, not too much between them in the 60 foot, but the Corolla running on through 11.59 at a 1.24. What a great pass there to a 12.97. At a 103 is the first timer comes out now in the Falcon. And taking on LS Line, the Holden Commodore Sports Wagon, which uh, has got a passenger on board as well. Of course, uh, if your car doesn't run quicker than 10.5 seconds, uh, you can run have a passenger in your car. Obviously, they've got to have a helmet, long sleeve shirt, long pants, and cov covered shoes. But it's a good way to introduce people into our fantastic sport of drag racing which as you can see ladies and gentlemen very very accessible and uh, look if you've got a young son or daughter that you think you know what bring them out here let them have a run down the drag strip it is very very safe and it's better to do it here than do it on the streets and them running the risk a of losing their license or their life so uh, bring them out here to Sydney Dragway Looks like the little Civic down there in the rocket lane, a little bit of an issue off the start line. And his counterpart in the Aeroflow lane running on through with the 15.53, but uh, maybe a little bit of an issue there, maybe a, a missed gear shift out of that car. As we've got the Ford Festiva coming out now in the Aeroflow lane, taking on the Commodore VT. Little Ford Festiva. <laughs> Great little handling car, these ones. It's a shame that uh, Fords don't still build them. 
but 2.36 in the 60 for both cars. Only a thousandth of a second between them in the 60, but looks like a little Festiva might have the win here. Yeah, he does. A 14.07 to a 14.67 as we got the Mazda out now against the Dado. It's a battle of the grandpa spec. So I started just having a quick word to the driver in the Mazda. Just giving him a few instructions of where to pull up. Do have a bit of a headwind for those people that are watching via YouTube or Facebook. Uh, we've got a headwind coming straight up the track. It's been happening pretty much all afternoon now. It looks like little data, a bit of an issue off the getting it off the line. A little bit of a wiggle there from the Dado. The Mazda, similar thing, had a little bit of a move at about 200 foot out. And a 1634 to a 1645 as the VL comes out now up against the Focus. So got about an hour and 15 minutes until we may, and I'd say that may run the reaction time, but we will get confirmation at about a quarter to nine as to whether we've got enough entrance tonight to run the reaction time for this contest. Now it's a battle of the AUs. Oh, oh. now just keep an eye on our starter. It says that it can do a burnout. <laughs> now Chris has just picked up that there is fluid coming out of that Falcon. So that's why he's being pushed back. Now guys, just bear in mind if you are in the staging lanes, guys, make sure you've got your air conditioning turned off. So if there is any liquid coming out of the car, as you can see, we will push you back to the line. We got Will down on the on, at the start line. He's an AU fanatic. See, Will, I push my case. <laughs> He'll get me back for that. But uh, now we got a little bit of liquid. Unfortunately, it's come out of the orange AU. But the AU in the Aeroflow lane, 1601. As we've got the Falcon out now, he's about to take on the VL, which. We'll have to wait because we do have a little bit of a clean up in aisle two. But we've got a great bunch of cars and bikes here this evening for Aeroflow Race for Real. Don't forget, guys, we do have burnouts coming up around 9.30. And our theme night coming up too, Rotary versus V8. Oh, can't wait. That's in a couple of weeks because we do have the diesel... So the Dirt and Turf Festival, which is coming up as well. So if you're into heavy machinery and things that like to make a lot of mess, uh, and you're in that industry, make sure you do get out here to Sydney Dragway and you can check out all the big machinery. But we do have a bit of a clean up in the rocket lane, guys. So we do need to uh, get this cleaned up. So while we're getting it cleaned up, guys, make sure you do grab yourself a coffee from Denise. Grab yourself a pizza from Gas Fired Pizza. Or if you're down in the pits, make sure you grab something to eat from the Top Fuel Cafe. And also go up to the Sydney Dragway Merchandise Shop. Grab yourself some shirts or a jumper or a hat. We can get a few words from our sponsors. We'll be back very, very soon here at Aeroflow Race For Real.
Overflow Performance provides a wide range of high quality performance products for racers, street machines and hot rodders. From fittings, fuel system components, intake solutions and even turbocharger systems. You can see it all at aeroflowperformance.com. Are you a motoring enthusiast? Shannon's are giving you the chance to win a USA Supercars Drive Experience at the Circuit of the Americas and Las Vegas racetracks. Drive a Ferrari, Lamborghini and Porsche. Visit Dallas, Austin, Las Vegas and LA. The trip for two includes airfares, luxury accommodation and $10,000 spending money for eligible Shannon's Club members. Plus, win a new Indian Motorcycle Sport Chief. To enter, take out new Shannon's insurance on your special car, daily drive, bike or home. Go online or call Shannon's on 13 46 46. BikeReview.com.au is Australia's leading website for performance and modified motorcycles. BikeReview.com.au is the only motorcycle focused website to feature motorcycle drag racing on a regular basis. And in the words of editor Jeff Ware, our involvement with Sydney Dragway is our way of putting back into one of our favourite sports. BikeReview.com.au Stay informed, up to date and entertained thanks to Para News. Para News is Parramatta and the Cumberland area's leading free and local newspaper. Delivering the best content from on the ground journals and providing businesses with direct access to potential customers. News, sport, entertainment, buzzers and so much more. Para News really is the heartbeat of Parramatta and Cumberland and it's out every Tuesday. Get your free copy at selected locations in the area or check out paranews.com.au. Bank said no to your home loan? Talk to us. Not a bank. Talk to Australia's real-life non-bank for home loans, car loans, personal loans. Pepper Money, the home of loan options. Whether you're building a street machine or a race car, Aeroflow Performance has a solution for you. Our ever-increasing range features boosted turbocharger systems, Bosch Motorsport products, X-Pro electrical systems, hoses and fittings, bank shift shifters, differential parts and fabrication components. You can see it all on aeroflowperformance.com. Well, welcome back to Aeroflow Race for Real tonight, supported by Motive Video. And we got the Honda down on track in the Aeroflow lane. We just had Wild 3 go down the track, ran a low 13 second pass, that beautiful looking purple RX3. But I'll tell you what, I'm keen for this next pass as we're about to welcome the Bushman back onto the mic because we've got a name G Mercedes that looks gangster. Well, now we've got the Galano Engineering AMG killer. The Audi RS3. This is actually a very, very nice little car, Stu. I uh, saw it across the road on Saturday night down in the pit garage. Very, very nice. Carbon fibre bonnet, full cage. It had a uh, a parachute on the back on uh, on Saturday night. Doesn't have it here at the moment, but uh, yeah, cage all inside. Um, big uh, screen inside with all the uh, engine telemetry and everything all over it. So, uh, very, very nice car. Well, this is the driver of the Galano Engineering Mark 7 Golf. Because his name Chris, I think, was. I think it was Chris. Yeah. Yep, yep, From yep. memory. Well, guys, looks like we've just got a little bit of coolant in the rocket lane. So we're just running a single lane at the moment. The boys have brought the burner up. Okay. So we're just going to burn off whatever's come out of that AU Falcon. See, if Mark Thomas was here, he'd be giving it to it right now, but uh, that yeah. AU Falcon's lucky because you're here. Well, is, is it the wagon? Did the wagon no, 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 it was the orange AU Falcon. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, well, I guess uh, it's bleeding, uh, bleeding sweat, as they say. <laughs> <Shoot. laughs> Love it. Oh, I'll tell you what, got up on Bose, 2.91 on the 60 there, and he was off it at the eighth mile and goes 10.666. Yeah, still a, a pretty fresh car, I think, this one. Yeah, just going to run this car now. Down the end of the track. <laughs> TG goes, of course there's fluid. It's an AU. <laughs> like I said, sweat. <laughs> go, go. 
Don't forget, guys, the Sydney Dragway track shop is open till 9 p.m. tonight as well. So make sure you go to get in there, grab yourself a hat, grab yourself a T-shirt. There might even still be some good Friday burnout merchandise for sale up there. So make sure you go up and see Jackie while you're up there. And while you're there, make sure you duck in and see Denise and get yourself an, some nice hot, fresh donuts and a coffee. All right, got the BMW about to make its way out. Because uh, the BMW is just recently at the Bathurst 6 hour, if you missed it, took the top three positions, the M2s. And of course, uh, big congratulations, Sydney's own Jaden Ojeda for winning it back to back. So 1340 there for the car. Now, oh, why well, the camera hasn't broken? It's just Ben's had to duck out, duck out for a little bit, but he'll be back very, very soon. Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, it's an RC car. Yes, Ben has gone for food. Uh, we've got the Mitsubishi Lancer that's about to come out. Bit of smoke coming out of the Lancer, but he goes still goes to 16 1. That's a good pass for that car as well. Don't forget, guys, if you're down in the pits, make sure you say good day to Andrew Hawkins and the team down there. Andrew walking around with the camera, getting some fantastic content and really showcasing what a great event that we've got here at City Dragway every Wednesday night. As you saw by the ads on the big screen here at the track and also on the live stream guys we do have the GTR festival coming up very very soon you do not want to miss it if you are a GTR fanatic I got the Mazda back out first timer he's taking on the Falcon the Falcon with a much better reaction time the little master probably building up a little bit of boost 2.2160 there for the master the Falcon running on through the 1491 and a 1542 at 86 there for the little Mazda okay. as we've got the Toyota Orion by the look of it okay. about to make its way out in the rocket lane Now, it looks like the hot rod has got a little bit of an issue, so we're just... He's just going around the back, so it looks like... 
we may have a solo pass here for the Toyota. <laughs> DJ Prouse via YouTube said, Team Rutherford mufflers, suspension and CVs will be down in three weeks. Fantastic. Can't wait to see that, DJ Prouse. Uh, got the Caprice back out in the rocket lane. Good, genuine 10 second car, this one, which is very impressive considering the weight of the car as well. He's taking on the VE Commodore. Well, 1073 there for the Caprice and the V Commodore. It's running on through with a 1723 as the Mitsubishi FTO comes back out, taking on the Commodore. Well, the Commodore got the jump on the start line. About half a second in front of the FDO at half track, and he goes 15.50 to a 16.91 as the p platter comes out now in the VL. And he's taking on the Pro Street Cartel Falcon. Well, the Falcon out good, 1.78 in the 60. And the P-Plater there in the VL with a 2.64 in the 60. And the Falcon running on through, 11.65. Great consistent car, that one. And the VL running on through with an 18.53. Now, it looks like we might have the Mercury Cougar. Back in the Aeroflow lane. Or the yeah, the car down there in the aeroflow lane is pointing straight towards the wall, gets it back online on the hit. Both cars sub two seconds in the 60. An 11.64 there for the rocket lane to a 10 triple five at 125. <laughs> so we got the SUV about to come out and in the rocket lane and taking on the VF. Well, that's that one of those BMW SUVs down there in the rocket lane. Bit hard to tell from up here with the tinted glass and the dark colour, but 1.81 in the 60. And look at that, 10.98 with a 4, 127 for the Soccer Mum car. And a 10.15 at 138 there in the Aeroflow lane. Great pass from both cars. <laughs> that's what we like to see, side-by-side -side drag racing.
Oh, got a Falcon out in the rocket lane. And he's taking on the Holden Crewman. Well, the crewman out with a 0 0.280 reaction time, 2.20 in the 60. The Falcon is starting to stretch its legs. And a 14.05 to a 13.29 there. For the Falcon, as we've got the FG Falcon about to come up, come out against the BA, BF. Oh, get off it, son. Oh, the FG. <laughs> Kept his foot into it, and the car just gripped up. He's very lucky to get away with that one. 1397 there for the rocket lane to a 1592 as Sammy Joe comes out now. And this very tough radial shod VRVS Commodore. Speaking about radio cars, big congratulations must go out to CMV Performance and their the customer with their grey Holden Commodore radio car went 6.8 seconds in te in a private private test day. So, uh, look, huge, huge, big congratulations to those guys. All right, the Ford Ranger Raptor. About to come out now in the rocket lane. He's taking on the Capri. Great to see a great bunch mix of cars here tonight as well. We've got four-wheel drives, we've got steel bumper, we've got some of the modern stuff, good amount of imports. <laughs> well, 1110 there for the Capri and a 1389 for the Ford Ranger Raptor as the Kaliti Motorsports VF Commodore comes out now with the battle of number plates. DJ Prowse is asking, what did you eat, Ben? Well, I can tell you, DJ Prowse, he's stuffing his mouth full of pizza at the moment. Okay. Okay. Oh, now Balor has tried to leave the line. I heard it rev up a little bit. 12.43 in the aeroflow lane, but it... Sounds a bit like the may have broken the drive shaft. So we're just going to push this car back. Hopefully it's not dropping any fluid out of it. That's a bit of a shame there for the Kaliti Motorsport VF Commodore. Well, guys, we've also got Joe's ice cream up the top as well. 
So if you've already eaten dinner, you can go get yourself an ice cream. Oh, I got the AMG Mercedes about to take on the Falcon. G'day, Mad Cow, Mad Cow Mark. How are you, mate? Welcome to the live stream. Right, just waiting the f for the Falcon to make its way in the stage. Might be a first timer. So we're very patient for these guys. It's good to see them out here and having a crack at off street drag racing here at Sydney Dragway as part of Aeroflow Race for Real. 12.19 there for the Aeroflow Lane to a 14.53 as we've got the H, the Kingswood out here, which is, I believe, has come up from Victoria, I think it was. Victoria or South Australia, this car's come up from. Oh. We've got Vic down there just guiding the driver in. He's taking on this VH Commodore. G'day Wally. Yeah, Wally, we do have bikes tonight. <laughs> yeah, we've got a fair few fair few bikes here tonight, Wally. <laughs> G'day Ibrahim. Welcome to the live stream. The Kingswood up against the Commodore. Well, the Commodore out with a 1.87. The Kingswood out with a 1.44. It's going to be tight at the finishing line. Oh, and he gets the win. From up here, it looked closer. Then it said 10.15 to a 12.01 as we've got the FC RX7 from Viz Rotary out in the Aeroflow lane. Well, the Commodore has broken the beams. Here goes the Viz Rotary FC, 1.67 in the 60 of there, so that's a radial car. Probably just dialing this car in, just maybe doing a few 60 foot to 330 foot launches. Just to get the car sorted. Now we've got our track walkers just having a quick look, maybe just make sure everything is A-OK, -okay. but uh, look, 1.67 and 60 there for the FC. All right, Smoking Joe Sabello is out now in his supercharged LS-powered Nissan 180SX with the S15 front. This car originally was going to be a drift car. And then uh, the person that was building it either lost interest or didn't have the funds. So Joe bought the shell, ripped out the steel cage, put a chrome moly cage in it. Probably right, Mad Cow Mark. Might have been a VH. Good. Only guessing by the taillights. Unfortunately, I haven't got uh, Mr. Holden sitting next to me tonight, Mark Thomas. All right, Joe, 
1.44, he left before the third amber. But 1.44, 1 to the 60. And Ron's on through with an 884 with a 1 at 159 miles per hour. To an 11.82 there. So Joe, just got to get used to that two-step and the way that the car is behaving. It is the first time tonight that that car has had the blower hooked up. As we're into the bikes, the bikes have been putting on a fantastic show tonight as well. We don't have a huge amount of bikes here, but what we do have is quality. And a 9.99 with a four for the Kawasaki to a 12.36 at a 1.21. Oh, I got one of our Harley riders in the rocket lane. <laughs> well, eleven thirty one to and eleven seventy two there in the rocket lane. G'day KP's Kingdom and Cooking, watching from Canberra while polishing my custom bean bean and walking stick. <laughs> Welcome to the live stream. Yeah, I agree, Scott. We need Ben's Beast in the other lane. <coughs> We're eleven thirty-three to a ten ninety-four. I right, got the Harley out with the ape hangers in the rocket lane. Great sounding Harley, this one, too. Oh, a bit of a wheelie there, a bit of a wiggle out of it as well. 1.84 in the 60, pretty much on the rear tyre. A 10.32 with an 8 at 1.46 to an 11.85 at a 115 there for the big Harley. Another tough bike. I don't know if this is one of the Dark Side Customs customer bikes, because those guys were out here a few weeks ago with the rider just doing some testing. And uh, look, most of the Harleys that do come out of Dark Side Customs, they sound super duper tough. <laughs> oh, got it up on the rear wheel too. Had to kick the leg out. It's headed towards the wall, starting to bring it back into the centre of the rocket lane. Goes a 10.19 to a 12.88. For Certainly got a little bit of attitude off the start line. Michael Richards coming out now on the AMS water meters, Jackson 750 as we welcome the Bushman back to the mic. Hello, Stu. Hey, mate. Having a good night. Unfortunately, oh. I was just uh, having a, a conversation with the GM, but uh, all good now. So uh, into some bike action once again. These uh, riders getting plenty of track time tonight. Michael out in front with an 088 on the tree and runs through for a 994 with a 2, 138 mile an hour. So he's definitely uh, happy around that 990 uh, time frame, isn't he, at the moment? Done a handful of passes around that... Uh, that um, area of time. Yeah, it's good. A nice, consistent bike. We've got the Mazda MX-5 out in the rocket lane. About to take on the Falcon. I wonder if these two are mates. They've <laughs> raced each other. Every run that I've seen, they've come out together. So they must uh, basically just follow each other back around to the staging lanes, I think. Oh, it's actually interesting them. that the, the uh, order hasn't actually been mixed. But uh, the Mazda running a little bit quicker on its last pass, Stu. 
14.20 this time around, 110 mile an hour, so a little bit quicker on the uh, on the speed to a 14.22 for the Falcon in the uh, in the airflow lane. As we uh, speak of Falcons, this one's just. I wonder if he'll swap his tyres for the burnouts a little bit later. Oh, I I hope so. Because he's worn a fair chunk off the ones that he's got. Look, Scott, you just got to keep pushing Ben to to get the intruder out on the out on the quarter mile. Well, what have you got at the moment? Oh, the Boulevard. He will when when the time's right, won't you, Ben? When the time's right, he'll get out there and give it a crack. That's all right. fair. All right, Gus Boy. That'll be a good move. Well, that true. It's a big bike. Well, Gus Boy out there now in the Nissan Navara. Well, the Commodore are out with a 2.10 in the 60. Runs on through a 13.1. Navarro running on through with an 18.23. As the GR Yaris is up against the Toyota Kluger. Of course, that's Danny Stadermeyer, the Greyhound to Rescue. Sponsored car. Scott said, when his nails dry, maybe. <laughs> Bit of smoke coming out of Danny Stadelmeyer's Kluger. <laughs> oh, Danny giving it heaps in the Kluger. It goes a 19.81 to an 1890 there for the GR. I got the Falcon Ute. About to take on the Falcon Sedan. Hope you're enjoying all the action from here at Sydney Dragway for Aeroflow Race for Real tonight. Proudly supported by Motive Video. Don't forget, guys, the Sydney Dragway track shop is open till 9 p.m. So if you need to get some earmuffs for the kids for the burnouts, they do sell earmuffs up there as well. They've got the hats, the shirts. Jackie up there will be able to help you out if you do need to get any merchandise. Well, unfortunately, a 24.6 there for the car in the Aeroflow lane. A few issues. As we've got the Toyota Corolla about to come out against the Honda Civic Type R. All right, little Corolla taking on the Festiva, is it? Uh, Honda Civic oh, this Type is, R. Oh, sorry. Yep. Looking at the high tail lights, sort of through yeah. me. Sorry. Well, you do have a red uh, Fiesta running tonight, so. Well, look at that Corolla go. 12.36 with 7 to a 14.15 there. As LS Lion comes out and puts on a good solid burnout. Taking on this absolutely mint looking little 1200 wagon down in the rocket lane. See the cameraman from Motive Video getting some fantastic burnout shots there of LS Line. Well, can you hear those tyres protesting <laughs> for traction on the start line in the Aeroflow lane. Away now, Tim with the little Dado is keeping up with him as best he can. Little bit of fume out of it at the top end. I got you got this, Stu. He did. Three hundredths of a second across the finish line. Thirteen twenty-six with a five-one twelve mile an hour to a thirteen fifty 
four <laughs> with a four for the uh, for the wagon. I wasn't expecting that. No, we got the Ford Fiesta out now against the Hyundai i30 in. I was only one car out, and to me, with my crappy night vision, it looks the same. <laughs> no, there's not too much difference between them from a distance. But uh, Little Fiesta has actually surprised me how quick it is now. The yeah. uh, 530N doing the chasing. Of course, if you've got a Hyundai, a Kia, or a Genesis, and you want to get some performance work done to it, make sure you do check out Cherry Tuning up in Hornsby. They've got the dyno room. They've got full servicing, logbook servicing, all the way to wild conversions. They are doing a lot of R&D on those cars at the moment with the E85 as well. So do check them out. Tristan and the and the crew up in Hornsby. Are you like me, Stu, when you're driving the traffic and you smell the E85? Oh, you, absolutely. What, what car, what, where's that coming from? Every time yeah, immediately look around and try and find what sort of car you think might be running it. Well, normally it's, an, normally it's a VL Commodore that I... If I see a VL that looks relatively clean and... Sounds good. Like first thing I do is have a sniff, and I'm like, "Yep, E85." 1464. Speaking about E85, must huge big shout out to Power Plus Race Fuels as well, who uh, support the burnout scene as well, and supplied a lot of the methanol and E85 for Good Friday burnouts as well. The Stevenson family. Yeah, they also uh, those distributors. They also uh, back a number of our sportsmen. Uh, races in uh, Super Street Super Sedan as well yep. Alright, the Skyline up against the Civic the Skyline will get the win as stretches its legs goes to 1383 to 15.05 as the Pete Blader is back out in the VL he's about to take on the Focus Ah, I can see why he's all excited. The cameraman's down there in prime position. He's about to get smoked out. <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, all, all the footage you see that cameraman taking and you see Andrew Hawkins talking to people, that will be going onto a feature on the, the Motive Video YouTube page. So do make sure you check that out. See all the action from tonight's Aeroflare Race For Real, proudly supported by Motive Video. As the Focus goes out with a 1.87 in the 60, the VL, well, I think it used a lot of its energy in the burnout there, Ooh. but uh, it goes 2.40. I could hear something spooling up, and I think it was the uh, the rocket lane there, Stu. 12.64 with a 5 at 106 mile an hour through the finish line. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, get your limit of fingers up. It's not even burnout time yet, but we've got the burnouts happening from the AU Falcon. Hey, <laughs> that's what we're talking about. I <laughs> love it. <laughs> Not quite sure, TG, when the next diesel or four-wheel drive night is going to be. It, it feels like it can't be too far away. Nah. We usually have two, two of them a, a, a year. And uh, the last one probably feels like it would have been about six months ago. Yep. 1385 with a three, 102 mile an hour for the rocket line. And the uh, awesome AU, 1574 with a one in the aeroflow lane there. Well, looks like we've got a, another VL Commodore down here in the rocket lane. About to take on a wild three, the RX3. Fly three litre down here in the rocket lane. Great looking VL Commodore, this one. Unfortunately, our start line official just uh, spawning something on the surface under the Mazda. Not sure what it is. Has been a little bit fumy on some of its passes, but uh, we'll soon see what the decision is. Of course, uh, the VL just sitting in the staging beams at the moment. 
you know, Decider asking, is there a new date for the cancelled Euro theme night? Yes, I believe Decider it'll be in about two weeks' time. Uh, we will have that theme night. Rotary versus V8. Well, unfortunately, there for the RX3, a little bit of fluid coming out of it. So our starting crew have done the right thing. We've got to push him back. So Fly 3 Litre is out on the solo. It goes 2.12 and 60. TG's asking, how much is it to race on a Wednesday night? I believe it's 65, I think it is, to race. 65 or 70, but if you buy online, guys, it is cheaper. <laughs> Naj, Steffi's asking, what happened to the roll drags? Unless the roll drags got washed out, as far as I'm aware, it went ahead. I wasn't here for that event, though. Oh guys, if you want to race, if you're a car competitor and you're buying your tickets online, it is $63.75 to race. And if you're a bike competitor, it is $53.55. If you just want to come and watch, guys, it's $22.95. And bear in mind, guys, that is the online price. So, yeah, the gate, get tickets at the gate a little bit more expensive. Yeah, that's right. But it's certainly a cheap night out, really, when you think about it. You bring your car out. Of course, uh, if you've got a helmet, uh, covered shoes, a long trousers and a long sleeve top, you can um, come out here and see what your car really does down the quarter mile. Now, I do apologise. I said a Mercury Comet earlier. Um, I've got a feeling, actually, it might be a potentially be a Charger. I just had a look on the what? screen um, as it was coming which car is that, Stu? Uh, the black steel bumper car that we just can't see the front no, of. Oh, it's a H... HR Holden, I think it is, oh, Yeah. The, the black car, is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I thought it was a Charger. I'll get back to you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll just... Uh, I'll check it. It looked like a HR from behind. So, you know, it's, it's good, guys. I mean, it's a great, as Steve said, it's a great night out. But most of all, guys, aside from the safety aspect doing it, of racing on the track and saving your licence, hey, you get to be part of this fantastic community that we have here on a Wednesday night at Aeroflow Race For Real, and you get to meet other like-minded enthusiasts. 100%, Stuart. You make some new friends. Everybody's pretty... Uh Pretty friendly, of course. It is pretty casual on a, yeah. on a Wednesday night. We're not racing for sheep stations. I guess the only competition mm. is, is their action time 
um, competition, which is a test against yourself. That's right. Uh, and the same with the, with the times and speeds that get run down the quarter mile here. Basically, you're just testing yourself. Occasionally, exactly we have right. uh, things like the workshop wars and yeah. those sorts of things, a little bit more uh, competition-like, I suppose, for an for a, a Aeroflow race for real. But it's all about getting out here, having a good time, meeting some new people, testing your skill against the Christmas tree, testing your skills as a driver in terms of your reaction times, uh, running consistently, um, although it's not, not the be-all and end-all. No. And I did mention earlier tonight, too, towards the start of the, the, the show, we will be running Pro Tree later on tonight as well, which adds a whole different dimension. Yes, it sure does. To drag racing. It sure does. It's probably a little bit tricky for um, some of our cars to cut a good light on a Pro Tree, just yeah. simply because they don't react as fast as... Uh, what they might need to. Well, I do apologise to the driver of this car. Apparently it's not a Ford, it's a HR, and I, I feel so bad. See, this is the problem when I've got still bumping cars and I'm not as old as uh, Mark Thomas. Uh, I'm not really... <laughs> oh, shot well, fired from the background, one, Well, maybe one person, that's Paul Galvin. <laughs> Galvo. So, uh, look, I do apologise, but, you know, hey, I'm only human. This is the car I thought you were talking about. No, no, no. no. It's not. The, no, the no. one you are talking about is a, uh, is a Charger. Yep, Charger, yep. Very nice looking car from up here. A lot of sheet metal in it, and that equates to a lot of weight. Probably got uh, yeah. a fairly big power plant under the bonnet to keep it moving. You know, I'm more into... Uh, I'll, I've always been more into the four-cylinder and... Side of the well, side of it. You're a, you're a late '80s child, aren't you? I am. I'm an early '80s child, but uh, no, I'm real, I'm real, I'm into the imports and the four cylinders. I do appreciate the V8s. What I meant by that was when you were interested in cars was was early, late late '80s, early '90s. Oh, yeah, 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 absolutely. <laughs> I'm not giving your age up, Stu. I'm just saying. Oh, that's all right. I give my age up all the time. Doesn't worry me. All right, guys, red lights are off. Yeah. All right, so a pair of the generals are finest on the start line. The car's fired back up. Let's get them into stage. Unfortunately, the tyre is probably a little bit cooler than they probably would have liked by now. But uh, that is racing here at the Aeroflow Race for Real Wednesday nights. Commodore in the Aeroflow lane. Not too much in the uh, reaction times. Commodore slightly better 
by three hundredths, but the old HR out in front and will take the win. 11.71 with a zero. 1.17 mile an hour through the finish line to a 13.91 at 1.02 for the Commodore in the Aeroflow lane there. Two very pretty cars sitting on the start line. Our next pairing out, just waiting on the Capri to bring that second white light on. 347 for the Capri. A 610 for the Aeroflow lane. And I think the Aeroflow lane's going to drive on around. He's out in front and it will take the win. 1054 with a 7. Thank you very much. 126 mile an hour to a 1084 with a 7. 125. All right, the BABF Falcon down here in the Aeroflow lane about to take on the FG Falcon, which on its previous pass spun the tyres and was very lucky that he got off it in time. And I dare say on this pass he's probably <laughs> learned his lesson just quietly. The early model Falcon through with a 12.95, 11 mile an hour through the finish line. Not a bad run at all to a 14.56 with a three at 110 mile an hour. In the rocket lane, what do we got there? A Ford Ranger. F Ford Ranger and a Ford Falcon on the start line. Yeah, the Ford Ranger Raptor. Well, Sammy Joe, 0 0.013 reaction time there. And runs on through with a 12.39 at 116. AMG going through another burnout in the uh, in the airflow lane. Looks like he's on a solo at the moment. There's nobody in the uh, in the rocket lane against him. Well, we haven't seen the AMG killer come back. The uh, the grey Audi. So uh, a bit of that car's had a little bit of an issue. Maybe the guy was just doing a little bit of testing. But the AMG out with a 1.91 in the 60. And runs on through for a 12.13 with a 6.115 mile an hour. Strong burnout from the Commodore in the uh, Aeroflow lane there, Stu. Yeah, it was. Nothing like the old school Commodores with the air cleaner hanging out of the bonnet. Scott said he hopes to get down to the bend oh, this yes. weekend to watch the drag drag racing, he said he hopefully get to see Carl Cox and his Capri racing. Of course, Carl Cox will be down at the Riverbend Nationals. Still waiting to see Carl come out here to Sydney with the Pro Mod. I'm looking uh, forward to it'll, that. It'll happen. I'm looking forward to that.
Well, guys, we're back into the bikes. <laughs> Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Just uh, we're talking about that. Uh, the Dodge Challenger, uh, sorry, Charger before the Black Charger. Um, the Dukes of a Hazard car, of course, they've what it is. It was, and of course, just uh, double checked. And uh, the, the first question that Google brings up is how many Dodge Chargers were destroyed in the filming of Duke, a lot. Uh, Dukes of Hazard. Do you want to have a guess? I, I have to say, at least three. Keep in mind, I'll give you a couple of hints. There were seven seasons, 147 episodes. 147. So times that by two or three. Well, you're not far well, away. Probably get your, yeah. My maths isn't that good off the top of my head. Well, but, two, uh, two times 150 would get yeah. you pretty close. Yeah. That's a scary number. <laughs> that's made, that's yeah. made, made this car a lot more uh, rarer than what it probably could have been, I yeah. guess. A little bit like um, HQ racing to the to the collectability of HQs and uh, the Hyundai XLs to the future collectability of Hyundai XLs. Well, after what I saw, some of the action I saw from Bathurst on the weekend with the HQs and the HQ race, I yes. uh, can see that not much has changed in that's, HQ racing. That's where I was going, Stu. But in yeah. saying that... From my younger days, the the, the races of HQ class are, are a little bit more a um, little bit more reserved now than what they, what the, what I remember them to be. However, in in Bathurst Air, they might be a little bit different. Yes, it might just um, bring that red mist down a little bit further. I don't know, but uh, still a pretty good category of, of uh, circuit racing to watch. Well, it is. Like I mean, that. I grew up watching uh, Peter Dane, <laughs> that used to race in the HQs. I recently found out that two of my co-workers used to race in HQ. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. So um, we were just talking cars to him the other day. He's like, oh, I used to run HQ. Yeah, Jeff. So he's telling the story, and our um, business development manager, he uh, also raced in HQ. Oh, wow. But his car was immaculate, according to him, and and he's a little bit... Um, he qualified well, but he wasn't so um, brave in racing. So yep. unfortunately, by the sound of it, went backwards relatively quickly. But... Um, he just loved his car looking really nice. Not that, not that the fast ones aren't nice. It's no. just that I think in certain sectors of circuit racing, you have to be a little bit more forceful. Um, oh, look, that's probably a word. Not so scared to, to rub a panel here yeah. and there. No, and of course with those cars too, towards the end of the race, they tend to get a little bit squirrely yeah, as yeah. well in the rear end. Yeah, they're not the same car that you start the race that's with. Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Another run from the rider in the Harley in the Rocket Lane. It's run quite a few passes here tonight. Wow, 989, 146 miles per hour. That is honking. race that one pretty close 10.55 with a 5 in the rocket lane 145 mile an hour to a 10.87 with a 2 at 130 mile an hour in the aeroflow lane there all right we've got this what i'm guessing is the dark side customs harley tell you what this bike whether it I presume it's got a turbo on it, but I'll tell you what, it's a bit of a handful off the start line, pops the front wheel up and then just wants to shoot towards the wall. That's a better launch. That's much better. 1.70 in the 60 there for the Harley. Winds it up and goes 10.03 with a 5 at 139. Yeah, nice pass. That launch was all about uh, clutch and throttle application, that one. Absolutely. Two riders sitting in opposites of the lanes, one both out near the wall. 
looks like the rocket lane out in front at the moment. 11.51 with a 4. 116 miles an hour through the finish line to a 12 to 1 109 in the airflow lane this year. Yeah, good run from both those cars. Mm. You've got the VL Commodore down here in the rocket lane with the Venetians in the back. He's taking on the Falcon. <laughs> well, the VL, much better reaction time, but the Falcon a lot quicker in the 60 foot to the VL. And he runs on through with the 14-1. And the VL running it through with an 18-69. As we've got a pair of old school Ford and Holdens out now. We've got the Mang 4 leader, which we'll see in the burnouts a, a little bit later on this evening. And the long roof. Uh, I do believe it's the dad driving it tonight. He's having a lot of fun in the ute. Well, point one eight two there. Oh. Reaction time for the Holden, starting to head towards the centre line. Not really where you want to be, but he wants on through with 13.76 to a 14.34. Another big strong burnout from the car in the airflow lane. Taking a little Corolla this time around. Let's see if the Corolla can, can get back into the, uh, into the 11, Stu. Last one was a little bit slower than what we've um, become accustomed to, I'll say. So let's just see what happens, what unfolds. I wonder what sort of engine's in this thing. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I'll tell you what, it's got a bit of poke about it in the 60. 1.69, the high comp assisted Commodore down there in the Aeroflow lane. Fair bit of wheel spin for that car, 11.40 there. Yeah, wow, that's probably the fastest run of the night, I'd say. For the Corolla, 124 mile an hour through the finish line. It was 13.23 at 108. What well, the welcome the Gus Man to the live stream on YouTube. G'day, Gus Man. Hope you're doing well, mate. Oh, <laughs> All right, LS line back out the sports wagon. Goes so 1.98 in the 60, bouncing around a little bit, those yeah, two. Yeah, just notice that, the uh, independent rear. And the wagon gets their first 13.15 with a 1, 106 mile an hour through the finish line to a 13.0 at 103 for the Falcon Ute. Oh, this should be a reasonably good battle, I reckon, Stu. Oh, yeah, well, Danny Sotomayor was black tracking all the way down Goodness. to almost half track in the Kluger. He was giving it to it. I wonder how he's done that. Is he running like 400 pounds? Well, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's contact is one, one tread width. <laughs> <laughs> An 025 on the tree for Danny and Gus Boy with a 0.177 reaction time. The Navara has got to do the chase and you won't catch him. Not with that reaction time, but Danny running on through with a 15.43 at 90 miles per hour to an 18.39 at 77 there for Gus Boy as the I-30N is back out in the Aeroflow lane. He's taking on the Ford Fiesta. <laughs> Scott said, last warning, Ben. Don't push it, mate. <laughs>
Well, unfortunately, guys, we're, we're a few cars short for the reaction time prize contest tonight. So Yeah, only, and only a few. Yeah, was, only a few. <laughs> unfortunate, but they're, they're the rules in which we uh, govern the decision. Yep. And play the game by. It's been a crack over a night, though. It's... Uh, Nice and warm still out there, and uh, yeah, all our competitors getting plenty of passes in. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> all right, probably the smallest burnout from our VL driver that we've had all night. <laughs> Yeah, I think you're right, Ben. He needs a little bit of tread to get home. Well, I was assuming it's heat. Well, point one four eight on the tree there for the VL. Fair bit of wheel spin, though, out of the left rear wheel out of the Falcon. You can see the chatter marks off the start line. And the people that are running on through with the 16.15 to a 14.90 there for the Falcon. Right, guys, just a quick mop up on the start line in the rocket lane. Tell you what, we might just just throw up to our big screen for a couple of quick words from some of our supporters here at Sydney Dragway, and of course the Aeroflow race for real here tonight. Shuri and I will be back with you very very soon. with Shannon's. We've also got Shannon's home and contents cover. Which helps protect our automotive collectibles, tools and memorabilia in the home and garage. If you're motoring enthusiasts like us, it's got to be. Shannon's. Shannon's. Insurance for motoring enthusiasts. Call 13 46 46 for a quote. Well, now that the smoke's cleared from that big burnout that unfortunately we couldn't show because we were throwing it to ads, but there is a very dominant pair of burnout marks from the water to around about halfway up to the um, to the start line and that, that smoke is literally just clearing now. Yep. All right, if got... Ben switches to the staging lane cam, you can see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We've got another Falcon up against the Honda. Lots of throttle work going for the Falcon down in the rocket lane. We must welcome one of our new sponsors as well here to City Dragway, Nitto Engineering. It's great to have those guys on board. Look forward to seeing more of them further down the track. Welcome guys. Of course our long-standing sponsors Atlantic Oils, 
VP Race Fuels, and of course Platinum Racing Products as well. Now the BA Falcon, or the BF, is just on the brakes towards half track, so I don't know whether he thinks there might be of an issue. If there is, you might want to move just a little bit closer to the wall. We're going to have the uh, Toyota Orion coming up very soon, about to take on Wild 3. Just got to wait for this Falcon to uh, make its way down to the end of the drag strip. It is pulling up over towards the wall. But we do have to wait until he makes his way around the corner. <laughs> now we've got the red lights flashing. Well, we're good, so that car will make it around the corner, so we can safely send this pair down the track. Ah, uh, listen to that little rotor seeing 1.83 to the 60. Doesn't give it an easy time, does he? No, he gives it hell. It's fumy, a little bit fumy, but it goes to 13.03 again. So nice and consistent. All right, AMG Killer is back out. The Galano Racing RS3 coming out for its second pass. Is going to be taking on this tough 10 second Caprice. a few little spots of liquid that we're just mopping up towards the start line in the aeroflow lane. Maybe just a few little drops of oil. Only very uh, sporadic by looking at the, the thinners being applied to the start line there. Certainly not a, a flow of whatever it is they're cleaning up. All right, guys, we're just about to get ready to send AMG Killer and the Caprice down the quarter mile. Just mopped up those few little spots of the wet stuff. All right, the Galano Engineering Audi. Well, the Caprice out with a 1.62 this time. The Galano Audi go, went 2.70 in the 60, but uh, Steve, that's not a good sign. He has stopped just after 3.30 foot of the racetrack. So, a bit of an issue there for the Audi. Yeah, I think uh, it's still in the early stages of development. As I said, when I saw it uh, on Saturday night, it still looks very, very fresh sitting in the garage, but... Uh, <laughs> Um, we know that the Galano Motorsports team know how to put, to car, uh, put a car together. They know how to make it run. They know how to make it fast. They've got a world record holding Golf R in their workshop. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, they got that car refired, so we're going to send him through the Junior Dragway Expressway. No, he's not going to turn. We're going to have to wait until he uh, gets down to the end of the quarter mile, the braking area, before we can send this Mazda up against Sammy Joe. Yeah, nice 
nice little RX2 coupe sitting down on the uh, Aeroflow start line. I don't see the little RX2s very often ah. nowadays. Oh. Semi Joe in the rocket lane. Oh, much better light for her. 022 on the tree. You can hear those tyres chirping at the hit and the dump of the clutch. Manually shifted Commodore through the finish line with a 12 3 0 at 116 miles an hour to a 14.82 at 90 mile an hour for the little RX2 coupe. So if you've only just joined us, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately we didn't get the required number of entrants tonight to be able to run the reaction time prize contest. So right. you will have to wait another couple of weeks. Yes, unfortunately, only missing out by a few, yep. a very few number. Hey, Stu. Yeah. Do you like nitro? I do love nitro. That was a bit of a silly question, wasn't it? Especially when it's in a uh, fuel altered. Well, I can't give you a fuel altered, but what if I told you I could give you top fuel dragsters, funny cars, and nitro bikes? Oh yeah. Would that would that suffice? Oh yes, and after what I saw the other day too, um, mm -hmm. on that subject too, uh, must congratulations to uh, Josh Lay, who. Uh, is in the process of licensing okay. for Top Fuel Funny Car. Yeah, wow. Nice. He did a, um, a little pass the other day, Steve. He went uh, 4.04, I think it was, to the 1,000 foot here. Okay, right. Yeah. Actually, I did hear uh, I, I was at work and I heard the, the distant and that was it. Yeah. And I said to someone at work, that sounded like a top fuel car. <laughs> and listening to it is as close as you're going to get. <laughs> well, we also had the Rapposada, um Wayne Newby top fuel drags to come out and okay. do a quick half pass. Of course, those guys we, have really had to rebuild We can't the give away numbers, but yes, no. it was good uh, good that, um, to be able to hear that surprise at work <laughs> yeah. as we work away. And so well, on. those guys have had to do a rebuild because uh, obviously yeah. they had a bit of a whoopsie at one of the previous events. And uh, thankfully, they've got the car back together. And uh, Wayne was his cheerful self, yes. waving as he drove, came up the return road. Yep. Hey, how you going? But, uh, you know, big news we should touch on, actually. Wow, wow. Nine, nine, where did that come from, Stu? 997 wow. with a 7, 141 mile an hour out of the Commodore in the rocket lane. I'll tell you what, I was going to say, you're in mid-sentence, that car left absolutely perfectly out of the start line in the rocket lane there. Now, one thing we should touch on, too, uh, in relation to top fuel, well, mm -hmm. is that uh, if you've been on Facebook lately, there's been a few teaser posts from uh, the POM, Steve Reed. Oh. Because uh, that car's not too far away from um, getting fired up. Car, I'm actually look pretty excited to see the POM come back and race. Well, I heard rumours of that happening quite some time ago, yep. but uh, I thought maybe that um, he decided not to or, or similar. Mm. But, you know, because obviously putting that style of car together isn't something that you don't build a team like that overnight and no. you don't necessarily um, uh, prep yourself in terms of building the car how you want it, set the car up how you want it. Mm accumulate the necessary parts because let's face it you, you can't go racing without parts definitely in nitro no. uh, spare parts that is so you know and, and that all costs time and money and um, you know the POM are no stranger to what's required uh, to to do that he's put put um, race cars and race teams together not only for himself but for, for other people uh, for a long long time and I know he's been helping um, Tim McCarthy in yep. his Nitro Funny Car, the Valvoline Nitro Funny Car. Uh, so definitely a, a valuable source of um, of information for Tim and the team. Absolutely. Uh, and I'll tell you what, you talk about hard races in Australian drag racing. Well, I'll tell you what, they don't get it much harder than the pump. No, no. <laughs> big, Condor, big boys.
But, you know, as Steve said, the the Gulf West Northern Nitro champs coming up here in Sydney, May 3 to 6, I think it is. Just getting that there for you. Teamwork makes the dream work. Three to the fifth. Third Three to the fifth. fifth. Sorry. Yep. Third to the fifth. Tickets are already available online. There is uh, six top fuel dragsters entered. Wow. And a further six Nitro Funny cars. There's also all of our Aeroflow National Sportsman Championship cars as well. And on top of that, you'll also see Door Slammer, Pro Mod, yep. Pro Stock, and Top Bike. So it's going to be a pretty damn action-packed weekend here at Sydney Dragway. Of course, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, th 3rd to the 5th of May. Yeah, can't wait for that. Now, actually, speaking about Pro Stock, you, you probably saw it, Steve, the Parenti family uh, coming back to Pro Stock. They're, they're from South Australia. They've been out of the sport for a little while, and uh, they're, they're coming back to Pro Stock, so we welcome them back. Yeah, it should be uh, good to see because... Uh, yeah, once the drag racing bug bites, it's it's sometimes difficult to uh, <laughs> to let go. Yeah. Uh, we believe that the Tremains are actually on their way down to South Australia as well this weekend. Well, I was actually listening to uh, Rossi Gregory's podcast on uh, Race Wide Open. Only today I had I played it. Um, there's, there's did an interview with uh, Aaron Tremaine and um, was quite good. Just uh, opened the, uh, you know, Aaron's thoughts up to the future of pro stock and, and where he felt it was going and where the next um, challenges might lie. But uh, I, I sort of got the impression from him, you know, lots changed in his life personally in the last 12 months. And, yep. and for him, like a nine time Australian pro stock champion, and like he even said it himself, he, he never thought that coming into to to pro stock as a as a racer that he would achieve nine championship wins it's uh impressive in in any in any category of motorsport um and i think he said out of uh there's a further eight i think that he was second to so um you know and one of those was his brother so um definitely a force to be reckoned with uh, within the pro stock category uh, but you know he and his brother just taking a chance to, to step back from the sport at the moment. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll contest the odd round, they said, yeah. but not, not, a, not a full championship. Yeah, and speaking about the championship, Rob Deckett is leading the points at the moment in pro stock. But for me, the, the big improver is uh, Don Rick Motorsport. Rick Chilton, he's currently sitting second in the point score at the moment. And just behind him is Chris Soldatas. So, you know, when... When Rick Chilton bought that car of his, which I believe is the next Lee Bektash machine, it's uh, Dodge. It he's doing really well. And look, you know you're doing well when <laughs> if you're ahead of Chris Soldatis in the points, yeah, because Chris Soldatis is one of the toughest pro stock racers in the country. Yes, there's a big big knowledge pool in that uh, in that pit area. I can oh, tell yeah. you, and uh, plenty of personal experience from from him as well. And um, yeah, I think most people that, that get into pro stock certainly know what know what they're doing, how to prep a car, and how to make it go fast. But uh, the Soldatus team definitely do have uh, a, a big brains trust in that team, um, and certainly making plenty of horsepower, as is uh, all of the, the competitors in in pro stock. But I think that the key to getting those cars down the racetrack is certainly off the start line and and, and getting that power down as quick as they can. Yeah, and change. I mean, those if you've never been to drag racing before, guys, because they do shift the gears manually as well. Yes. So that's another thing. You've got to be able to hit those shift points and do it every run. Well, I think Aaron was saying with his car, he's he's dumping the clutch and changing into first in about 0.8 of a into second. Sorry, in about um, 0.8 of a second. Wow. Usually when he's wow. looking looking for uh, looking for second gear. Wow. And he said he had to train himself in the early days to wait for the shift light because the natural thing is dump the clutch and shift straight away, which yep. you think, oh, point eight of a second is pretty much straight away, but it's not. If you short shift, you bog the engine down. So then your mind says, well, I have to run it harder in second into third, into fourth. Yes. And 
all you end up doing is damaging valve train and, and all that sort of thing. So uh, I think you said most races are into fifth gear at around four and a half seconds into the run. Wow. wow. So they're dumping the clutch, steering the car, and completing four gear changes in, in under five seconds. Wow. Um, and, and most of the good races will be in within around 50 RPM of the ideal shift point on wow. each pass. Wow. Wow. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. So, hey, if, you, if you've been to drag racing and you're not really into pro stock, hopefully that broadens your horizons because it is a fantastic Group 1 class pro stock. All right, Smoking Joe Sabello is out in the skyline. He's got clean green. And an 11.10 there for Joe to a 10.29. So, guys, that's the Gulf Western Oils Nitro Champs coming up here at Sydney Dragway. It's going to be a fantastic event. You do not want to miss it. Get your tickets online because it is cheaper than buying them at the gate. And if you love Nitro, guys, as Steve mentioned, make sure you get out here and hopefully we get a good amount of top fuel motorcycles out here as well to uh, come out and put some action on track. They're pretty even off the start for these two. I think they're pretty even, although locked together at half track. Aeroflow lane just down in front and runs through for an 11 008 at 130 mile an hour. So up, Gypsy said to say a great explanation, Steve, as well, for uh, what explaining well, post-op. Thank you very much, man. I, I do try. Sometimes I get it wrong. Sometimes I make it sound like I know what I'm talking about. And, uh, yeah, no, it was all fresh. It was only today, as I said, that I was listening to the podcast, and that's that's what uh, Aaron was basically just repeating what Aaron had said. But, uh, yeah, certainly, as I say, a man of, um, of great wealth of experience. He did say that... Um, did make a comment that because there's obviously been some people saying when is pro stock going to go to EFI yeah and he said to tell the truth he said I've tested EFI on on my engine and he said that the horsepower figures out of the box were nowhere near a carburetor believe yeah, right. it or not yeah wow. yeah that's interesting so obviously there's development that needs yeah. to go into the type of injector the spray the all of the stuff that um that yeah, EFI technicians and tuners uh, have to deal with, but he said in reality, he said we were nowhere near where we needed to be wow. um, compared to the carburetor. So obviously the carburetor working very well with how that engine's set up. I mean, I think those those little 400 cube small block Fords, uh, Chevs and, and, and Hemi style engines are, are making, I would hazard a guess, a thousand plus horsepower at least yeah. um, at the flywheel to be running that sort of ET. But like anything, when they switched to uh, unleaded fuels, there was a little bit of a downturn in the performance. Um, you know, here we are a couple of years on and, and, and they've gained that back and some. Yes. Uh, so, you know, I, I think with anything like that, the if, if Pro Stock in Australia was to switch to EFI, that there obviously would be a... Um, a little bit of a period where the, the R&D would have to take place. Yeah. And then from there, um, you know, we'd see performance, you know, similar, if not a little bit better, probably than the carburetor at the end of the day. I think, um, you know, Aaron did make a, a good point that obviously with the use of the carburetor, they don't, uh, sorry, with the EFI, which they do in the US, they don't have the big scoops in the US. They run a... a, a, a a central throttle body which picks up air through the front of the bonnet, I think, or something along those lines. So naturally, by doing that, the car would be a little bit more slipperier through the air. Yes. Like we see with our Pro Mod cars and the, and the at times 270 mile an hour that those things do. Oh, without the big supercharger and the injector hat sticking way above the, the roof line of the car, as spectacular as it looks, it is probably a, a negative on... Um, on the aerodynamics of the car in terms of it has to push through create that hole and push through it where if the um, the there's no scoop then that obviously reduces the frontal surface area yes 
Oh, they're great. Actually, uh, you might get a bit of a laugh out of this. Scott yes. just said, I would love a junior dragster with a funny car body to run the shops in. Well, funnily enough, they run junior funny car in the US. Yeah. They're not... When I say a funny car, I haven't seen one for a while. I did see... Um, a short video of one only a week or so ago and it's like it's sort of got a body on it but it's not fully enclosed obviously for safety reasons um, this particular one went 81 mile an hour on the 8th wow so it's as quick as a as a junior dragster uh, and keep in mind they are somewhat shorter in the wheelbase but not that um, not that getting crossed up is is a a major concern with junior drag stuff, but but still, we do. There is such a thing as junior funny car. Yeah, well, I know there's one running in the states with a uh, super body on it. Oh yeah, one of the modern day supers, and uh, they look really, really cool. Um, they really do. But no, I I, I agree with you, Scott. I, I, had a, I had a running joke a number of years ago uh, when I used to commentate with Chad Nalon. I said I'd love to verse him in a junior dragster yeah. race. Just thinking that we should do you, you, me, and although I need a big car, um, so does Rusty. I I found out you can slide the pedals forward and backwards. Thank you very well, much. Ben. I was talking to one of our junior competitors only recently who imported a, a new car, and he's six one, and the pedals are all the way up, as close to him as possible. Wow. Yep. Wow. So, a big car. He's Wait, a big kid, but yeah, it's a big car. He said there's plenty of room left in it for, for him to grow <laughs> a little bit more. Um, most of them do run adjustable pedals, too, so you'd yeah. be right, mate. We yeah. just extend the brackets. Yeah. Yeah. You're you're lucky that you're probably the only one out of Rusty and I, out, out of the three of us, who'll actually get in the car in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> It's without chopping the roll cage off. Yeah. Well, 1395 there for the Hyundai i30N. But yeah, guys, do check it out. The Gulf West Oil Nitro Champs coming up here at Sydney Dragway. And big thank you to Gulf West Oil for continuing their association with the Nitro Champs. It's going to be a fantastic event. I'm looking forward to all the sportsman racing, which is what I love commentating on. The little Corolla's going to get around the uh, Ford at the other end. Ooh, only just looked closer than that. TG goes six foot one and a kid. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think the car the car was bought out of necessity. Yeah. <laughs> because it couldn't get in the other one. And of course the the the. the the, the thing that I see, obviously, with juniors and being an ex-racer is you, you are actually time-limited in the car. So as yes. soon as you turn um, 17, you, you, I think you can finish the season off that you're in, and then that's it. Um, yeah, we saw uh, Sacrafalo. He had his last race meeting uh, two weeks ago at the last um, yep. um, Speed Addict Clothing Co. Chip. Yes, I did notice that, Ben. It's already on Marketplace. So if you do want to buy a, a very well-presented junior drag, so there's a blue one uh, with a silver sort of flashes up the side. Um, yeah, it wasn't... I didn't think it was ridiculously expensive. I won't advertise the price, but um, if you jump on a Marketplace, search junior drags in Sydney, I dare say you'd find it. It's like a metallic blue uh, colour with, a, with a, a silver flashes up the side. All right, well, the Falcon deciding to rip it up for the burnout. He did this previously, the AU Falcon. Not as big a skid this time, but still very well represented. Yeah, we've got to wait for it to drift up yet, Stu. Well, I don't, think, I don't think it is going to drift up. I think we're pretty safe on this one. Uh, not, yeah, it's not going to drift up as far, but no. it's still just be slower. Well, actually, now you mention it. 
13, one, zero with a zero, 104 mile an hour through the finish line. Yeah, Skidder Media, Skids will be on around 9.30. Speaking about burnouts, there's a very nice looking uh, green and black Hilux down in the staging lines. <laughs> it's a nice looking green, isn't it? Mm. Under the lights. Don't know if that's Gus Boy or Gus Man, but. And the 12.39 with a 7, 123 mile an hour in the aeroflow lane there. Go, go, go. To take the stripe. Go. So guys, if you uh, go, go. happen to be out and about, one thing I, you know, we're very fortunate here, we've got a great lot of cars that come here to the drag strip and compete here at Sydney Dragway just for a bit of fun, getting it off the street. But I'm interested to see what's happening in the street scene because obviously, I work a lot, I don't get a chance to get out on a Friday, Saturday night like I used to and uh, you know we had a, a group here tonight that had some of their cars on display which is fantastic, thank you very much guys by the way <coughs> for putting your cars on display, <coughs> but uh, guys let us know, <coughs> like if you've got a car meet coming up this weekend as part of your car group, just I reckon, I reckon you could do a know. cars and coffee thing this year. You a cars and coffee guy? I am a cars and coffee guy, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I've, I've, I've put the rocket down at St. Ives a few times. We need we need to find you an older car. Yeah. <coughs> to see for us, can you tell us what engines each car is running, guys? Oh, well, uh, I'm guessing there's a pair of rotaries in these ones. <laughs> Well, look, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Wild 3 is running the 13B. Uh, the RX2, I'm not sure whether it's a 12A or a 13B. <laughs> well, I know the street scene is lacking a little bit, TG, but um, look, there are a few people that do get out and about where possible. Um, like about a month or two ago, I was down at Harry's just thought, you know what, I'm going to go down and have a bit of a cruise down there and see who's down there. And there were some nice old school XW, XY Falcons that were down there and uh, a few other people getting around with yes. their four cylinders. So I wouldn't say the street scene's dead, but, uh, you know, there's not as many people out cruising. You guys should host a meet at Penrith and get all the skid cars to go like Chubba and the Khalidi crew. That's possible. We did. We hosted it on Friday last week. Well, yeah, we had good Friday burnouts. Skidder Media. Yeah, I know up in Newcastle, DJ Prowse, there's a lot of cruises and park-ups. Uh, as a matter of fact, years ago, and I'm talking early 2000s, before, long before I was commentating here at Sydney Dragway, I used to go up to Horseshoe Beach on a Friday night with my best mate. And uh, we used to go up there and hang out. I know that uh, there was cars under the stars last night, and I know that um, Bryce, who's here tonight, Bryce Lucas, he actually took whoops down and put it on display. Uh-oh, I'm worried now. Steve's got a microphone in his hand, and he's heading over the bench. Be prepared, ladies and gentlemen. We're about to have something very rare occur here. Yeah, I remember the old lighthouse runs, TG. <laughs> but of course, I come from the street scene. Now here's a voice that uh, you 
may not recognise. Spot 04 leader, yes there are burnouts tonight. Check, check. Yeah, Benj, we can hear you, mate. we got Benj on the mic. Right, ladies and gentlemen, just a quick announcement for the riders out there. If you guys aren't doing anything on Sunday, head down to MCAS at Campbelltown. They're doing a ride for Kids With Cancer charity ride. It's 20 bucks to, to go for the ride. Um, I think it's 9 o'clock meet up for a 9.30 or 10 o'clock leave. So if, if you've got the time and you've got a little bit of funds in your pocket to help them out, please go down and just do it. It's for a great cause, and we'd love to see a huge group out there for it. Yeah, great stuff there from Benji. And uh, it's the first time I've ever heard you on the mic. I wasn't very... That was very impressive. Uh, great stuff there, Benji. And as Ben said, it is for a good cause, guys. So if you are on two wheels and you want to be part of a great... Right, definitely get on that, and uh, no doubt, will you be there? Yeah. Oh, great stuff. Well, hopefully, Ben and the boys are on there. TG said, "Oh no, Ben, you laugh out loud." But uh, TJ Prouse, well done, Ben. That's awesome, and it is awesome. You know, that's what we're all about, guys. You know, not just enjoying your cars or your bikes. It's about doing doing it for a good cause as well. I'll take my hat off to all those people that have organised that group ride. <laughs> well, 10.49 there for the Charger. Yeah, it wasn't. There's a little bit of a flash of something out of the car at the top end of the racetrack too. So maybe uh, just mixing a few cylinders up or maybe just touching the uh, rev limiter perhaps. Not 100% sure. It didn't seem to hurt performance too much. The AMG leaving the start line on yet another pass. He's probably done a, a handful. It would be six or seven, I would suggest. Yeah, he's done well. 12.56 with a two at 1.13 mile an hour through the finish line. All right, got the soup sedan back out. They do have two drivers in this car this evening. Just pumping into a pre-stage there. That first light, light on. Now into the second. The tree drops down. Goes 4-3-6 on the Christmas tree. It's on a good pass. 1-6-1 to the 60. 10-34 with a 7. 132 mile an hour through the finish line. Why am I smelling tyre smoke all of a sudden, Stu? It's like people have been doing big burnouts all night, but all of a sudden it's just come into the into the uh, commentary box. So, guys, that's a Kids with Cancer charity ride Saturday the 13th of April. And then Saturday, I said, 13th of April. And they're meeting up at MCA Campbelltown in the top car park at 9am. Now, the stand's up at 10 a.m. sharp. It's $20 per bike on entry, and it's cash only, and all types of motorcycles are welcome. So, guys, do get out and support the charity ride. It's for a very, very good cause. DJ Prowse said, let's have a charity ride at the drags. <laughs> it's not a bad idea. <laughs> 993 at 147 down there in the rocket lane. Yep, to an 11.45 with a 6 at 117 in the aeroflow. And XP 
bearer bikes. Leaving the start line now. The Aeroflow Lane a little bit better on the reaction time. Still out in front at the eighth mile mark. Still going to be out front in the finish line. 14.53 with a 189 miles an hour. Big Harley having a little bit of fun in the burnout. We're not too far away from getting into tonight's burnout. No, almost on cue, Stu. They're uh, rolling through the tunnel now. Yeah, the rider in the rocket lane had an, a really good launch on the last run. Let's see what he can do here. One point seven seven this time in the sixty from the big Harley, and a ten point one one with a two at one hundred and thirty eight. Well, guys, that looks like that's it for the racing side of things. Uh, we're about to get to the burnout, so uh, everybody who's in the stands doing the right thing, moving back to this, the start of the blue seats. Oh, right, guys, we're going to go throw some ads, and then when we come back. We're going to get our smoke on. I've chosen to use VP Racing Fuel since I was a teenager racing motocross, which was 21 years ago now. I just have a really personal trust with VP Racing Fuels. Running on the ragged edge of uh, blowing up and not, a lot of it has to do with the race fuel, and that's what we rely on, VP Racing Fuels. VP has been making racing fuel for 43 years. They're the official fuel of multiple top series globally. No matter where we are in the world, no matter what fuel we need, it's always consistent. It's always perfect and exactly what we're expecting and our tuners expecting. They support myself, my Drift Alliance bros, and for that, I'm extremely thankful. Keep making amazing fuels, and we'll keep out there having fun. Are you a motoring enthusiast? Shannon's are giving you the chance to win a USA Supercars Drive experience at the Circuit of the Americas and Las Vegas racetracks. Drive a Ferrari, Lamborghini and Porsche. Visit Dallas, Austin, Las Vegas and LA. The trip for two includes airfares, luxury accommodation and $10,000 spending money for eligible Shannon's Club members. Plus, win a new Indian Motorcycle Sport Chief. To enter, take out new Shannon's insurance on your special car, daily drive, bike or home. Go online or call Shannon's on 134646. Aeroflow, famous for our massive range of hose, fittings and performance products. Air filters, oil filters, fittings, engine and transmission parts, fuel systems, tanks, silicon hose, exhaust, air conditioning, turbo and nitrous accessories and more. Get your free catalogue and shop online now at aeroflowperformance.com.
All right, guys, we're not too far away from kicking out the burnout part of tonight. Looks like we've got a few good hitters down there as well. How you going, Mr. Hawkins? Fantastic, mate. You? Mate, really good, mate. Thank you for being a part of Aeroflow Race Reel for the first race reel of every month. Mate, the content you put on the last video, fantastic. Cheers, man. Yeah, look, we, we've been coming to Dragway for a long time, and obviously whatever we can do to help the car community, from showcasing cars that are here racing, showcasing the burnouts, um, obviously showcasing the work people do, and just bringing back the social environment to a Wednesday night, that's our only goal, and that's all we're trying to do by being here every first Wednesday of the month, and yeah, it's, it's a good time. I, I love hanging out here, I love racing, and love helping the sport as much as I can, and just the scene itself. I want people to come and just have fun. Well, mate, it's always good to see you here, mate. You're a legend. Cheers, and I'll tell you what, mate, GDR Festival coming up too. Yeah, 24th, 25th of May, roll drags on the Friday night. It's going to be huge. Uh, we'll even have a couple of burnout demo cars at GDR Festival as well. Drift demos, the lot. So, um, yeah, 24th, 25th, coming soon. But let's enjoy some skids. Absolutely. It's good to see yeah boy back on the burnout pad. Ah, Sydney, put your hands together for Yeah Boy from the Thai Militia.
Always a very, very well presented vehicle, that one. All right, Ivy Frying coming up next on the burnout pad. As you just said to me, it's been a little while since we've seen him skid, but it's good to see him back on the Burnout Masters. Burnout Pat. Oh, Ivy Fryan's he's got his groove on now. Oh, just as I say that. <laughs> That's all right, he's got a minute, 12 to go. Let's see if he can get at least one tire off. Uh, looks like I'd be frying. May have just given up the ghost. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. He got out there and gave it a go. There's a bit of steam coming out from the engine region. All right, Mang 4 litre is about to come out. This car's been drag racing all night. They're about to put it on the burnout pad.
Well, there we go, guys. Cody in Mang 4, leader. They've been drag racing all night on the burnout pad. All right, next up, we've got the Eco Mang, which is coming up next, the Commodore Ute. Well, a little bit unfortunate there for Eco Mang. Car just not too happy. Next up on the burnout pad, we've got a first timer. We've got Delinquent, which is coming out next. It's got an LS2 V8 in it. And I've been told it should have no problem turning the tires.
Ah, uh, great stuff there from the delinquent. First time, I uh, still on the pad. He is killing it. Get those limited fingers up, Sydney. Well, great job there by the delinquent. First time on the burnout pad. Hey, next up on the pad, we've got a car. It was a good Friday burnout. It is Smoke Gem. Had a few little issues at Good Friday. The t out here testing it tonight. Well, looks like a, a little bit of an issue there for smoke jam. Start off good, and then it was a, just a hint of smoke coming out of the engine bay. And unfortunately, it just conked itself out. Well, that's a bit unfortunate there for smoke jam. No worries. Well, I'm sure they'll get that car fixed up and we'll see Smoke Jam doing what it does best and smashing a set of tyres. All right, next up on the pad, we've got our last car. We've got the VT Commodore, which is on its way out. Once we get Smoke Jam pulled off the burnout pad, guys, give me a round of applause. Got out there. As I mentioned, a few issues at Good Friday. They brought it out tonight. A few little teething issues, but I'm sure we'll see that car back. A welcome addition to the burnout scene here in Sydney. All right, got the VT Commodore about to let loose. Let's see what he's got for us. Let's get those fingers up in the air, Sydney. Let's show him some love.
Well, I thought that was a V6, but it's a nice roaring V8. Tell you what, that is a car to keep an eye on for the future of burnouts. Really good use of the pad there from the car. All right, guys, well, that is it for tonight's Aeroflow Race for Real. Proudly supported by Motive Video. Don't forget, guys, GDR Festival coming up very soon. Do keep your eyes on Facebook. Make sure you, you like their page. And also, we'll see you in a couple of weeks here at Sydney Dragway.